Indianapolis Cowboys. Typical rollout, typical pass, typical completion. Exactly what the Philadelphia Eagles will have to stop tonight. Plus this crunching driving runner from Yale University, number 35, Calvin Hill. And that Dallas defense hitting, hitting, hitting all over the field. 55, Leroy Jordan epitomizing it in almost every play. But the Cowboys must stop this man, number five, quarterback Roman Gabriel. And that man. Number 17, Harold Carmichael. The Cowboys against the Eagles. 15 seconds there. Stand by on camera. Stand by videotape. Stand by slow mo. Stand by roll videotape this time. And roll tape. Four, three, two, one. Take tape. On the first day of autumn, 1974, it's a beautiful night in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for football, the temperature in the mid-50s. And tonight it's the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. Dallas, in search of its ninth consecutive year of having reached the NFL playoffs, has one game under its belt, a convincing 24 to nothing win over Atlanta. Philadelphia, meanwhile, was upset last week by the St. Louis Cardinals. And another loss tonight would dampen considerably the optimism that has swept this city following last season. And ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is brought to you by Lincoln Mercury, who invites you to see all their new 75s, including the new precision size Monarch, Friday, September the 27th, the Day of the Cat. And by Gillette, makers of the Gillette Track 2 two-bladed shaving system. It's the closest thing to a perfect shave. Kate Smith's rendition. Before every Philadelphia Flyers hockey game, and they're the Stanley Cup champions, of God Bless America became a good luck symbol for sports fans in Philadelphia. Well, we may not be able to help the Philadelphia Eagles tonight, but we think we've got a fitting contest to follow up Buffalo's incredible 21 to 20 victory over Oakland a week ago. The Eagles against the Cowboys, with another interesting contrast in coaches. The Eagles, led by Mike McCormick, he took over a year ago, revitalized the Eagles team, acquired Roman Gabriel, he led the attack. But looking forward to a big growing season this year and counted that upset that the Gipper mentioned at the hands of St. Louis a week ago. So he feels he must win tonight. The Cowboys, led by the ageless Tom Landry. Eight straight years in the playoffs. Winners of one Super Bowl. An almost incomparably winning coach. So he's got everything going for him, including a plentitude of football talent. Now, I'd like to talk about the respective defenses of the two teams with my colleague, one of the great defensive players of all time, number 71, Alex Karras, Detroit Lions. Fill us in on those two defensive units. Well, Howard, the way I see it, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles has a young football team defensively. They made a lot of mistakes last year. They were very low on the totem pole defensively. They acquired Bill Berge from the Cincinnati Bengals. He's more or less like a Dick Butkus. He's going to roam all over the field tonight. He's going to knock the heck out of a lot of people. As for Dallas, they have a seasoned defensive football team. Guys have been playing together for 10, 12 years. The big acquisition course is too tall Jones has been used primarily as an off uh, offensive pass or defensive pass rusher. The man is sensational. He's vicious and he's mean. Last week, get this, he ate three offensive uh, halfbacks and didn't even spit out the cleats. <laughs> what do you think of that? What do you think of Harvey Martin, number 79? Well, he's the same type. He's a second-year man, and Martin and, and uh, Jones are used for uh, uh, pass rushes. 
and I think because of Gabriel's uh, idea of throwing the ball as much as he's running, you're going to see more of uh, Martin and uh, Too Tall tonight. Okay, you've already mentioned the great Philadelphia acquisition, middle linebacker Bill Berge, number 66 from Arkansas State. So let's find out something about those offenses by bringing in the senior blue eyes of the troop, the Gipper. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Mongo. Offensively, the Dallas Cowboys were almost as awesome on offense last week as they were on defense against the Atlanta Falcons. Now, whether or not they're for real, maybe we'll find out tonight. The heart and soul of the Dallas offense is Roger Staubach. He's their leader on the field. He's their spiritual leader. He can really get it done. He came back after a few weeks off against Atlanta. He ran, he passed, he led the offense as only he can do. He is quite a leader. He has two fine outside receivers in Golden Richards and Drew Pearson and a great tight end in Billy Joe Dupree. His counterpart, and when he wants to give the ball off to a man who can make the yardage up the middle, well, he has number 35, Calvin Hill. We almost left Calvin out because Calvin is a little bit questionable. He hurt his toe last week against Atlanta, but Calvin says, toe's all right, I'll give it a go tonight. Good receiver as well as a good runner. Starbuck's counterpart for the Philadelphia Eagles, Roman Gabriel, has been around a while. He can get it done when he has the time to get it done. That's going to be the big question tonight. Roman Gabriel last year came into Philadelphia after 11 years with the Rams, and he really got it done. And his principal receiver was a guy that is six foot eight, and an outside receiver, Harold Carmichael. He caught 67 passes last year, nine touchdowns. And at the tight end, the rookie of the year last year, Charlie Young from the University of Southern California, he caught 55 passes. So it should be an all-out offensive game with Charlie Young on the receiving end of Roman Gabriel, the big hands of Harold Carmichael. Can it offset the offense and the defense of the Cowboys? We'll find out in just a minute. I'm Walt Garrison. And you know there's times when a guy just can't smoke. And that's when I'm glad I've got school. It's smokeless tobacco. Gives you real tobacco pleasure, but you don't light up. You just take a pinch and put it between your cheek and gum, and it sure feels relaxing in there. And man, I need something to help me relax. For tobacco pleasure without smoking, millions of guys use Skoll, Copenhagen, and Happy Days. The Britannic, one of the last great ocean liners. On board, 1,200 people and seven bombs. Juggernaut, the greatest sea adventure of all time, has just begun. All passengers stand by lifeboats. Richard Harris, Omar Sharif. Juggernaut. Rated PG. Coming soon to a theater near you. To get the most mileage from a new set of tires, you treat them right from the start. We didn't do that. First, we ran a set of Sears steel-belted radials on the toughest back roads in Morocco. Then we put them on American roads. 72,400 miles later, they're still going strong. The Sears steel-belted radial, it can take a lot and still go a long, long way. Radial design, two steel belts. The Sears steel-belted radial, only at Sears. This touchdown pass and defeat the 49ers in this 72 playoff game was a great moment in my career. But I'd like to introduce you to another great moment. This is Gayla Vaughn. She has undergone open heart surgery to correct a critical defect. Not every child survives this ordeal. Gayla did. A great moment in her life. There are a lot of great moments in life, and you can share them by supporting your local United Way. The United Way, thanks to you, it's working. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. And you're looking at part of a capacity crowd of a little over 65,000 that have gathered here at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia to watch their Eagles against the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys with one win against the St. Louis Cardinals. The Eagles lost their, they lost their opener to the St. Louis Cardinals 7-3. Setting it up, Mac Percival acquired recently when Tony Fritz was hurt for Dallas. Percival from the Chicago Bears will do all the kickoff duties as well as the field goal kicking number 27 Poe James number 33 is Randy Jackson Randy Jackson just acquired by the Eagles from San Francisco a win gusting to around 14 miles per hour favoring Percival's kick and this will be Poe James at the goal line no Randy Jackson takes it away 
Jackson over the 15 to the 17 yard line. And let's take a look at that offensive unit of the Philadelphia Eagles. We've talked a lot about this man, Roman Gabriel. He had a big year last year, 460 passes. And Norm Boulash, acquired last year from Baltimore, had a big year. There's Tom Sullivan. He does it all. He was in the top five, both running and receiving. And how about this man, 6'8". And Don Zimmerman will be on the other wide receiver. And the former All-American, Charles Young, in his second year at the tight end position. So set to get underway here at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. The Eagles, first and ten, we're just underway. The ball at the 17-yard line. Gabriel goes to the air on first and ten, and he's going deep. He wanted his big man, Harold Carmichael. Carmichael racing down the sidelines, or rather Don Zimmerman down the sidelines. And quickly, the offensive line. Guy Morris will be at center, number 50. As we look at Steve Smith, his job will be handling the rush of Ed Jones tonight. Wade Key is a one guard. Guy Morris at center. Mark Nordquist at right guard. And Jerry Sizemore at the right tackle. This will be the defensive front four that they will be attacking. They are awesome. Larry Cole, Jethro Pugh, Bob Lilly, Pat Dume. On the sure pass, you're going to see Ed Jones and Harvey Martin. Second down and 10. The ball at the 17. And getting the call and rolling for about three yards is Norm Bulash. The linebackers for the Dallas Cowboys, well, they're not awesome when you look at them individually, but they get it done. Number 52 is Dave Edwards. He's been around for 12 years. Leroy Jordan's been around for 12 years. And D.D. D. Lewis has been around for six. They don't make mistakes. The defensive secondary doesn't make mistakes because if you make mistakes on defense for Dallas, you play somewhere else. It's as simple as that. Third down and seven. The ball resting over the 20-yard line at the 21. And it looked as if the Cowboys were drawn off sides as Harold Carmichael is wide open. So as we look at the replay, Alex and I had breakfast this morning with one of the uh, the Eagles coaches, Johnny Edzik, and Alex, tell them exactly how Edzik described they were going to go deep in a hurry. Well, that's exactly what they said. And the reason they said that is because uh, primarily they throw short passes. They said they're going to go a little longer tonight and uh, really mess up the uh, secondary of the Dallas Cowboys. Carmichael beating Renfro on that play. You saw him turn Renfro completely around. The ball is at the 48 now with the Cowboys. Gabriel again goes to the air and goes out to Don Zimmerman incomplete. Covered out there by Charlie Waters. Frank, if I may, as Charlie Waters, number 41, was covering Don Zimmerman. The other point I wanted to make, Alex, was what Idzik told us about watching number 34, Cornell Green, the strong safety. Roman Gabriel will throw long depending upon where Cornell Green lines up in the defensive alignment, right? That's right. If he isn't playing center field, then it's a different story as far as they're concerned. Second down and 10, the ball resting at the 48-yard line, just inside the 48, and we're just underway from Philadelphia, no score. Getting the call is Norm Bula. She pounds the left side, behind the blocks of Steve Smith and Wade Key, and picks up about three yards. Norm Bula, she put a little life into the offense of the Philadelphia Eagles last year when he came in and gained 436 yards. He has a problem, though. He's been having a little dizzy feelings for the past few weeks and he was a little questionable coming into tonight's game but apparently he's been given the okay ball at the 45 yard line third down the sure pass situation Michael, bottom of your screen Don Zimmerman on top of your screen Gabriel holding both backs in for protection and goes for Carmichael and overthrows Carmichael in front of Renfro Frank mentioned the dizzy spells Big Boo, Norm Bulash, number 36, has been having all through the years ever since he was brought up as a first-round draft choice from TCU by the Baltimore Colts under the then-ownership of Carol Rosenblum. There is Big Boo. His problem has been muscle pulls. He's a superb athlete. That's why he was a first-round draft choice. Now they seem to have the muscle pulls licked, but Frank, he's got that suddenly developed dizziness you mentioned. All right, right now you're looking at Mary Percy, the punter. This is Cliff Harris, number 43, and Golden Richards, number 83. 
That's snap. And Percy handles it, but he kicks a bad kick off to the right. And it bounds out of bounds at the 24-yard line. A 21-yard kick for the rookie from Westchester State here in Pennsylvania. We'll be back at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia right after this message. Friday is the day of the cat, the day of a new Monarch at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. Mercury Monarch 75, America's new precision size luxury car. Monarch ES 256 is engineered for 18 to 26 miles per gallon under highway conditions, 14 to 18 under city conditions. Designed with functional luxury, this two-door sticker price, including optional white walls, starts under $3,800. Destination charges, dealer prep, title and taxes extra. See the new precision size Monarch. <laughs> Dallas, first and ten. They move from their own 24-yard line. Toss goes to big Calvin Hill. Calvin Hill running over tacklers out to the 33-yard line, a pickup of nine yards. Offensively for the Dallas Cowboys, again, their quarterback is Roger Staubach. We talked about him at the top of the show. Roger Staubach, who gets it all done. Last year, 23 touchdown passes for Roger. You know, Frank, that's not a, a very difficult play. All they're doing is pitching out to Calvin Hill. It reminds you of Jimmy Brown when they're playing against Cleveland. All they do is pitch out. Everyone knows what's going to happen, but Hill goes to the outside and picks up that yardage. One of the reasons that offensive line punching big holes for Calvin Hill, who goes about 240 pounds. And second down along to the ball is at the 32-yard line. This is Golden Richards in motion, the Brady three. Staubach going to his tight end, Billy Joe Dupree, and overthrown as Billy Joe Dupree was picked up and covered nicely by number 28, Bill Bradley. Defensively, the front four for the Philadelphia Eagles. Jerry Patton, Joe Jones, Joe Tokey Jones, just acquired from Cleveland, and will win. Bill Dunstan, however, did not start tonight. He was replaced by the Eagles' third-round draft pick this year, and believe me, that was the first one they had because they'd given up their first two. Mitch Sutton. So Mitch Sutton is in there at defensive left tackle. Third down, two yards for the Dallas Cowboys. No score in the game. Ball just short of the 33-yard line. Now the two tight ends are in. 84 is Cubitt. 89 is Billy Joe Dupree for the Cowboys. Now the stacked backfield. Motion now is Drew Pearson, and Roger wants a bunch of it as he goes to the air. Calvin Hill doesn't hold on. And Calvin Hill appears to be hurt again. He's holding that left ankle. Whether or not it was a toe, we don't know, but he's down. Hit there by Randy Logan, the safety man for the Eagles. It'll be fourth down. Susceptibility to injury, of course, has always been Calvin's major problem ever since he came into the National Football League. A superbly versatile athlete could be equally gifted at the tight end position, as I've mentioned in past years. Indeed, always really wanted to play there. You see him limping off. Be interesting to see if he comes back in high fettle, or if he spends some time on the bench and Newhouse comes in. All right now we're looking at Marv Bateman on fourth down. He'll be punting to Bill Bradley, a dangerous punt return man for the Eagles, but Bateman really ripples one. This is Bradley at his own 25, and he goes down immediately. Bradley going down at the 30-yard line. 42-yard punt as head coach Tom Landry of the Cowboys looks on. We'll be back in Veterans Stadium right after this message. Now comes Miller time. Suddenly you're the three best sailors on the water. And that calls for a round of the best tasting beer you can find. Miller Highline, America's quality beer since 1855. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Eleven fifty-three remaining in the first quarter from Philadelphia. The Eagles are against the Dallas Cowboys. And the Eagles are coming off a fine year directed by this man in his first year. They have a 5-8-1. I say fine year. It was, Howard, because of the Eagles' past history. And because they came on so strongly and included among their five victories a 30-16 to trouncing of these very same Dallas Cowboys. They've always had rough, tough games, the Eagles and the Cowboys. First and 10 for Philadelphia. They move from their own 31. And the 13-year veteran, Roman Gabriel. This is Tom Sullivan. And Silky decides to go the other way and runs into a lot of Cowboys, but he still gets yardage. 
Tom Sullivan picking up eight yards out to the 37-yard line. Alex Garris, Tom Sullivan is another evidence of how you can find a gem low in the draft. Let's look at him again. A 15th round draft choice out of the University of Miami. Couldn't turn that corner, saw it. Reverse back, much as O.J. Simpson did on a given run a week ago, and then cut back up the middle, picked up the yardage. Gained over 960 yards last year, Giffer. And he caught 50 passes. Very versatile. Second down and two, the ball up to 38. The fake of the end around, going to help Carmichael. Hold on. No, he did not hold on. He was hit hard there by Cliff Harris, number 43, number 41, Charlie Waters. Alex, did you notice how high Gabriel threw that pass to Carmichael well, and take advantage of that height? Absolutely, and I think more and more you're going to see receivers where they're going to become six foot four and six foot five and six foot six, so they can get up and muscle that ball. Now, this is exactly what he did. He got up there very, very, very high in the air and muscled that ball in. Almost had the ball. And that sets up a third down and two, and you saw the ball bounce out of his hands just before he went to the ground. Third down, we'll call it a long two. It's not a good running down against the Dallas Cowboys defense. They major in stopping this kind of play on the run. And Solomon gets the call, but he did not get the yardage. It would not appear so. That's Calvin Hill's toe that you're looking at. He apparently re-injured it. We're waiting for word as to how quickly, if at all, he'll get back into the contest. Alvin Hill could do so much for the Dallas Cowboys, and he will be missed if he cannot return to the game. They yeah. never did that to him in the Harvard games, Frank. Merritt Kersey in to do the punting. Free agent made this team in the Philadelphia Eagles tryout camp. This is Cliff Harris, 43, Golden Richards, 83. Kersey this time with a better kick. And this is Golden Richards. And Richards is taken out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Hit there by number 85, Charlie Smith. 10-10 remaining in the first quarter. We'll be back. Sometimes your future may be captured in a single moment. In the present. We're helping 40 million people. More than 40 million people. We're helping 40 million people. At Metropolitan Life, we've spent over a century helping people prepare for the future. Metropolitan Life, where the future is now. The colors in the XL100 are really alive. These TV cameramen rate RCA XL100 solid state color TVs. I like the realistic color on the RCA XL100, like the blue of the Dodger baseball caps against the green background. The color on the RCA XL100 really jumps out at you. More senior TV cameramen own RCA than any other color TV. The color in the XL100 makes you feel like you're right down here on the field. RCA XL100. Don't settle for less. Leroy Jordan, middle linebacker out of Alabama. Been around forever, so it seems, yet with his guile, his experience, and his still continuing speed. I don't know of anybody who reads better than that man, Alex, and I don't know of anybody who's more where the ball is at than that man. Dallas, first and 10, the ball at their own 37-yard line. The two tight ends are both in there. Billy Joe Dupree, 89, Fugit, 84. And, well, Philadelphia jumped off sides, but were they drawn off? That will be the debate. The referee tonight, Fred Swearinger. Five yards, marked off against the Philadelphia Eagles. Mike McCormick of the Philadelphia Eagles. Great player in his time at the Cleveland Browns. He's done a fine job here in Philadelphia. First and five, the ball is at the 42-yard line of the Cowboys. Robert Newhouse. And Newhouse up close will be about... Very close to the first down, and I believe he does have it. You know, Howard, this what this what really gets me is these doggone punters. Now watch this here. Here's the snap. 
He's going to kick it. Here goes Percy's kick. There is no one, no one around him, and watch this act. Oh, <laughs> he fell on his little pompy. <laughs> well, he made the team as a putter, Alex. <laughs> First and ten for Dallas. They're at their own 48-yard line. The two tight ends remain: Fugit and Billy Joe Dupree. Golden Richards. As the handoff goes to Walt Garrison. Garrison goes down right at the line of scrimmage. Hit there by Jerry Patton. Jerry Patton, of course, an acquisition not too long ago from the Buffalo Bills. You're going to be seeing a lot of Bobby Newhouse for the Cowboys this year, even if Calvin Hill is healthy, because Calvin is one of eight defectors to the World Football League, and Tom Landry is not one to stand idly by and let his team languish. Newhouse can get you a lot of valuable yardage. He's a swift Don Nottingham, really. There's Calvin's foot. Oh, that poor toe. Second down now, about nine and a half yards as Newhouse, Newhouse lost a half a yard. Roger with the screen out of the flat. It goes to Drew Pearson. And Pearson down the left sidelines, but he'll be short of the first down. Taken out of bounds there by John Outlaw, number 20. What a find he was a year ago, Gip. Remember? Remember Alex Karras, Drew Pearson? Free agent out of Tulsa. Nobody knew much, if anything, about him. And then in the playoffs against the Los Angeles Rams, made perhaps the key play of the season for the Cowboys. The Rams won't forget it. Perhaps later in the show, we'll get a look at that play just to revivify the memories of the fans. You know what I'm surprised at? I'm surprised that Dallas is throwing as much as they're throwing. They're pr primarily a running game uh, football team and grind it out, but yet they're throwing on second down and short yardage. And they have the pass situation at the moment. Third down and six. Ball inside Eagle territory at the 48. Looking for Golden Richards, and he overthrows. Richards on the turn in, picked up well by number 20 outlaw and Bill Bradley, the free safety. And Roger had to put it over Richards' head. I'll tell you, I'm very impressed, Frank, with Golden Richards. I think he's going to be a fine football player. He's a good-looking guy. He's a very tall guy, something like you, you know. <laughs> I mean, he and you, I think, are the only guys I know that can look good in cheap clothes, Frank. <laughs> All right, we're looking at Marv Bateman. What do you think he wears, Al? <laughs> Gifford, I mean. And deep for the Philadelphia Eagles. We have three potential receivers. Marion Reeves, 45. Bill Bradley's 28. And Charles Smith is also back there. Bateman going for the corner. Oh, and he may have caught it on the one-yard line. Indeed, he did. Unbelievable. What a marvelous kick. And you know, he was doing that in practice. I watched him. He put maybe a half a dozen of them out inside the five. What was that statement he made, Gifford? Coach Landry wants me to kick shorter, but out. And that was a little bit of both. That was 47 yards out of bounds at the one-yard line by Marv Bateman. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I bet you Roman puts it in the air. He doesn't care where he is on the football field, much like Johnny Unitas. And he will probably put it in the air quickly if indeed he does, Alex, because he is going to get a rush. It's an opportunity for linemen to get points. First and ten from his own one. Goes to Bulash, and Bulash is nailed. Maybe he gets a yard. Number 75, Jethro Pugh is there. 75 view, 74 Lily. Lily, 14 years. Alex, when does a guy, when, when, when does the brilliance of strength and play give way to guile and experience? When does varicose veins start hurting, huh? Second down and nine. This is Poe James. Poe James spinning and twisting. He gets out over the five to the seven yard line. Hit there by Pat Toomey. Let's take a look at that front four. Against the run, the respective ends are 63 Larry Cole, 67 Pat Toomey, who is a future defector to the World Football League. 75 Jethro Pugh, who is likewise and of course the incomparable Bob Lilly, 74. Gipper? Third down and four. The ball at the seven. Tough down for Gabriel. Roman with the crowd back there and a flag flies. And Tom Sullivan. Remember, there's a flag down in the end zone. There's a holding penalty, Frank. 93 yards, but I think it's probably going to come back. 
There was definitely a holding. Pressure. No question about it. The official was all over it. But it was exciting for the fans who shot off their Roman candles and now give vent to their vocal displeasure. And Mike McCormick. <laughs> that could have been a record for the year that was just a race. 93 yards for a touchdown. It's coming all the way back. That guy, sorry, Giff, that guy was standing next to Mike McCormick is as good an assistant coach as you'd want to have around. John Sandusky, long-term man with the Baltimore Colts. Gabriel's not happy about the state of affairs. There it is. Holding, and the call goes against Jerry Sizemore, the offensive right tackle. Sizemore having problems with Larry Cole was detected holding. Well, Larry Cole beat him inside that time, Frank, and he had to do he had to do something, so he tried to snatch him up, and, was, and the re referee was right there. All right, third down and seven. 6.59 remaining in the first quarter. Gabriel going with the bomb intended for Zimmerman, but overthrown. Back there covering number 20, Mel Renfro. You know, and that sets up an interesting situation because Alex, Philadelphia will not be able to kick from a spread punt. They are going to be kicking from their own three-yard line, and that means they're going to have to be extra careful, offering all kinds of possibilities for a punt return. I'm, I'm really surprised also that the fact that Roman Gabriel is throwing so many bombs. I didn't figure him throwing so many tonight, and yet he's come out throwing the long ones. He usually is controlled uh, using six- and seven-yard pa pa pass patterns. A lot of pressure for a free agent rookie from Westchester State College as he kicks from his own end zone. He'll feel a lot of pressure. Deeper Harris and Richards. And he kicks a fine kick that Richards must fair catch at his own 38-yard line. A 33-yard punt. Couldn't ask for a whole lot more. You really want to avoid the run back. Let's cut back to memory as the Dallas offensive unit comes back on the field. Roger Staubach. Hitting Drew Pearson, the free agent from Tulsa, on a touchdown play. Now let's look at this next play. Remember this one? Deep in his own territory. Third down, long yardage. Drew Pearson double covered by Eddie McMillan and Steve Priest, but unaccountably, Steve Priest kept his hands at his sides. That's how Dallas beat Los Angeles. And the pitch out on first and 10 goes to Robert Newhouse. Newhouse hit at the line of scrimmage, but Worms loose and dropped the ball, but had it been blown dead. Robert Newhouse, in his third year out of the University of Houston, filling in for Calvin Hill, who was shaken up in the opening minutes of the game. And now Newhouse is hurt. Newhouse is down. Frank, we were talking about uh, the uh, Philadelphia uh, defensive football team being inexperienced and, and not really playing an awful lot together. With the addition of Bergie, what they're really trying to do now is to give Bergie a lot of room to run. So what they're trying to do is get their defensive tackles to jam the middle so Bergie can roam. And if they can do that, last week they weren't that successful. If they can do that, they can re really stop the Dallas uh, running game, and they're starting to do it now. All right, Robert Newhouse obviously shaken up. And I must say, in fairness to Bill Berge, who is a truly great football player, well, let's take another look at Newhouse getting hurt here, and then I'll resume with Berge. Was that a, wasn't that a face mask there, Alex? Yeah, but that doesn't count, Howard, not if you're a defensive ball player. <laughs> Berge couldn't get the kind of range that you talked about a moment ago, Alex, last week, because he got a knee cracked up in the early going of the game against St. Louis. That really delimited his mobility for the occasion, but he's fine tonight. Absolutely is. Number and he's, 66, he's Bill Burke. He's one of the most intense ball, player, intense ball players I've ever seen play. A man can be hurt, he could be coming off the field yelling, I'm hurt, but where, where? You know, he's fascinating. It seems to me you made a good point earlier when you talked about surprise at Dallas throwing so much, because they should run against this untested defense of Philadelphia line, especially with the rookie Mitch Sutton in there. They're sure not testing them right now. All right, replacing Robert Newhouse is number 21. He's a rookie, Doug Dennison. And 
He's initiated immediately and nailed by Berge. And he picks up about four yards, gets inside the 30. Doug Dennison, 6'1", 195 pounds. He's a rookie from Cutston State in Pennsylvania. Okay, here's Berge right now. Now, as you see, the tackles have jammed up in the middle pretty good. Although the center takes a good look at him, Berge gets off the center and knocks down. Does a pretty good job in there that time. He's a good-looking guy. Should get some commercials, Howard. Should. Third down and three. The ball just at the 30-yard line. Staubach, he'll run, get to the 10. He has the first down. He's inside the 25 at the 27. Nailed there finally by Will Wynn and John Outlaw. Wynn, 71, Outlaw, 20. Frank, I think I think Berge ran right past him that time. I don't think anyone touched him, but he just ran right past him. Let's see if we can get this. Here's Berge starting to drop back for the pass, going back into his position, watching for the hook pass. Starback, who can really worry a defense. Just when you think you have him, he'll break loose. Instead of uh, third down and nine, all of a sudden you have a Cowboy first and ten. And that's the situation at the 24-yard line of the Eagles. Here comes Dennison again over the right side. And this time, Dennison goes down after a gain of about one. Berge again there, along with Will Wynn. Well, they're, sure, they're, they're going to jam up the middle for Berge tonight. You can tell that. He's starting to roam real good. He reminds me so much of Butkus. He, He's, a, he's the type of guy that can dominate a defense and really shore up that defense. His acquisition cost the Eagles two first-round draft choices. The Eagles don't even have a first-round draft choice until, what is it, Gift 78? Yes, 75, 76, 77, 79. 79. 79. Well, he's a former New Yorker, and he wants to play in the East. Second down and nine. Ball at the 23. No score. A little over four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Here comes Wall Garrison, and Garrison finds a big hole, and he's down to the 15, just inside the 15, and hit there finally by Steve Zabel. Wall Garrison, the man who is always there when you need him, rides on the professional bull rider, bulldogger, all season on the rodeo. Steve Zabel was a first-round draft choice the same year as his Oklahoma teammate, Steve Owens, who went with Detroit, of course. Owens was in the drafting room, and when queried by all of us in the room, he said, well, I'm happy that I was picked, but Zabel's a better play. Third down and one. A little less than one, as you can see. The stack backfield for the Dallas Cowboys. That's Drew Pearson, the receiver, motioning to the left. Getting the call is Dennison. He has the first down, but a flag fly. Flag goes down, and it could be the Cowboys have taken too much time. That's the call. So it's going to be third down and six. Carmichael on the sideline says, let's get him, gang. Carmichael, he must be 6'8", six, 6'9", six, isn't he? 6'8", six, out of Southern U. You know, in 72, Carmichael caught 20 passes. Gabriel came last year. He caught 67. And that's what a good passer means to a good receiver, and this is a fine receiver. Third down and six. Ball resting right at the 20-yard line. Ball back. He's going for Pearson. Pearson cannot hold on. Good coverage by John Outlaw. There was a lot of contact back there at that particular time, but he hit him at the right time, and it, usually it's the, up to the discretion of the uh, of the referee, and I think he made the right play. You know, you could have called it either way on that, but the timing is perfect by the defensive back on this particular play. There's the ball, and they're both of them going for the ball, so there's, there's no problem there. Outlaw and Lavender, 20 and 30 respectively. Again, as we look at Mike McCormick, are the respective cornerbacks for the Eagles, and presumably uh, weaknesses in the Eagles' defense. Outlaw's a little fella, but his coverage then was excellent. Get the field goal attempt. Back first of all from 37 yards. Boy, oh boy. No good. I'll tell you how that 10 yards has psyched out a lot of kickers this year. It's unbelievable, isn't it? I just love it, Howard. So with 3.03 remaining in the first quarter, the game remains scoreless from Philadelphia. We'll be back. 
In the past couple of years, 15 million people have switched to the Gillette Track 2 razor. Here's why. It's the best shave I've ever had, and I get it every morning. I've never had a shave like this in my life. It's fabulous. I can just use the Track 2 and go swish, swish across my face, and all my hair is gone. I feel great. With the Track 2, the first blade cuts the whisker, and before it has a chance to snap back, the second blade cuts the whisker for a closer, smoother shave. The Gillette Track 2 shaving system, the closest thing to a perfect shave. This is Don Rickles. Give me the president, the bright guy. Hello. You the underarm biggie? Listen. Quit making your right guard antiperspirant with this super dry anti-stain formula. Why? Listen, you hockey puck. I'm an entertainer. I get laughs with my insults. But how can I get people hot and bothered when they've got your right guard keeping them cool? Right guard helps keep them dry. You keep selling right guard, and you can pay for my mother's apartment in Miami Beach. Mac Percival has just missed the 37-yard field goal for the Dallas Cowboys. The score is nothing to nothing. 3-0-3 remaining in the first quarter. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Mungo Mungo. <laughs> and we're looking at Calvin Hill, number 35. I'll get to a report on his condition in a moment. The Eagles moving from their 20-yard line. This is Sullivan. Sullivan getting away from Leroy Jordan. Picking up three yards, moving out to the 23-yard line. That's a hard defensive line to move out, I'll tell you. Calvin Hill, whom you saw walking around on the sidelines a moment ago on your screen, there he is again. It now develops, has a bruise under the big toe of the foot. And he's got a pad under there, and he may, judging by the way he's walking around, get back in. Second down and seven. Ball at the 23-yard line. Sullivan getting the call again over the right side, and Sullivan gets out over the 25 to the 26. It'll be third down and four. A report, too, on Bobby Newhouse, number 44 of the Cowboys' backfield, gentlemen. He has badly bruised ribs. They've put a rib pad around them, and whether or not he'll return has not yet been determined. Third down and four. A short four, if you will, a few moments ago. Roman Gabriel tried the run. The Cowboys stopped it. Let's see if he comes back with the pass. Gabriel with plenty of time, but good coverage prevents him from getting it away. And, oh, and he's really nailed hard by number 50, D.D. Lewis, short of the first down. Not one of your speediest runners, Alex. <laughs> You know, we were talking earlier today about whether ball players talk to each other on the line of scrimmage, and, and you do. It depends on, uh, you know, what the conversation might be. If you're losing, you're, you're griping and you're moaning, and you have a tendency once in a while to even curse out there, Howard. I never did it, but they tell me that it was done. I'd be shocked if you had been one of those. Merritt Kersey. Into Golden Richard. Percy with a good high boot. And Mel Renfro. Well, he, I don't believe he called for the fair catch. Mel hasn't been working back there. He just took the ball without the fair catch and was hit hard by Marion Reeves. Regional college football comes up this Saturday. ABC will bring you more NCAA college football from around the country. Texas will be meeting Texas Tech. That's going to be a big one down at Southwest Conference, Washington State. The Pac-8 will take on Illinois. Last year's Atlantic Coast Conference runner-up Maryland will be hosting the Tar Heels in North Carolina. And it'll be Holy Cross meeting Harvard. Check your local listing for the game in your area. Robert Newhouse has come back into the game for the Cowboys. But this is Walt Garrison, and Garrison is nailed at the line of scrimmage. Hit there by Patton, 77, and Berge, 66. Well, that's, that's what they needed. They needed a middle linebacker, and they went out and got Berge, and I, I'm sure he's happy where he is, and he's doing one fine job tonight. You know, we're still, I was, I was kidding you a little bit about what happens on the line, but when you have a rookie next to you, I think once in a while you do tell him, look at kid, I think this time you better start to think about rushing the passer or watch that inside rush, and, and you do talk back and forth like that. Second down and nine. The ball is at the 37-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. Clock ticking away here in the first quarter. No score. Newhouse with a big hole. First down and more. 
Two outs inside the 40 of the Philadelphia Eagles. Taken out of bounds at the 39-yard line by Randy Logan. Bruised ribs and all. He got back in there in a hurry, and it didn't impair his running ability a bit. You know, you mentioned our college football schedule, regionals this weekend, Frank. That Texas-Texas Tech game, even though it's early in the season, has enormous meaning, meaning in the wake of Arkansas's upset loss to the Cowboys of Oklahoma State 26-7 last weekend. And actually, the winner could actually be the team to go to the Cotton Bowl. Both teams very strong yet. All right, first and 10 for Dallas. 23-yard gain by Newhouse. Sawback sleds both. Oh, and a picked off. Picked off by Jerry Patton, I believe. The pass intended for a tight end, Billy Joe Dupree. But Jerry Patton dropping off the line of scrimmage. For whatever reason, I don't know, from the 50 tackle, came up with the football. Well, now the Eagles have field position. They've been waiting a long time for this with the quarter about to run out. You know, the only thing I can think of, Frank, of a defensive tackle not rushing the passer is I think that he thought it was a screen to his side and reacted to the right side, and there was the ball. Yeah, I would have never done that, though. He reacted beautifully because the Eagles have stopped the Cowboy drive. First and 10 from their own 41. Here comes Don Bullock over the right side and hit there by a whole bunch of Cowboys. Tumay's there. Lily's there. Jordan is there as the gun sounds ending the first quarter. There's no question that there was a blitz on. He tried to throw the ball, and he did think it was a screen and got out there, and that's the interception right there. I bet mean, he's a very happy guy right now. He can't run with the darn, but who could when they're playing defensive tack? Well, I saw you pick off some. Scoreless after the first quarter. We'll be back right after this. Scoreless after the first quarter. We'll be back right after this. These TV chief engineers rate RCA XL100 solid-state color TVs. We as professional broadcasters know that solid-state equipment is reliable. The XL100 solid-state television set reflects that reliability. More TV chief engineers own RCA than any other color TV. We use the solid-state XL100 at the station for great reliability, bright picture, and low maintenance. RCA XL100. Don't settle for less. Hey, Stan, do you really think I ought to make stocks part of my family financial planning? You buy a house, put some money in the bank, buy life insurance, invest in stocks you know something about, you're building for the future. There's risk, but long term, our economy will grow and millions of investors will share in this growth. The New York Stock Exchange. Give yourself a chance to grow with America. A very delighted Jerry Patton and Alex <laughs> Karras. How many interceptions did you have in your career? I had about six when I gained about two inches. <laughs> Quick feed it, Alex Karras. Everybody remembers him that one. Second down and eight. The ball is at the 44-yard line of the Philadelphia Eagles. First quarter, scoreless. On the draw play, it goes to Bulash. And Bulash finds a hole over the left side. Lose for five yards out to the 49-yard line. October the 13th, Madison Square Garden, not a heavyweight fight, not a hockey game, not a basketball game, but it will be called the main event. It'll be Frank Sinatra live from Madison Square Garden. That's the real blue eyes, Howard. That's the real blue eyes. Does it his way. The best there is at what he does for so many years, it's almost impossible to conjure it. Live over ABC. Third down and three. The ball up to 49. Cowboy. An offsides and a lead back, and Norm Bulas tries to turn the corner, just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Well, let's look at those first quarter stats. You see that they favor Dallas, but uh, in total yards, Philadelphia leads. It's in yards rushing that the edge goes to the Cowboys. They're equal in possession, really, 15 offensive plays against 16. So the Philadelphia defense, supposedly its weak spot, has been holding together. But the Dallas Cowboys have been containing the Philadelphia offense, which was negligible last week in the loss to St. Louis. And here's Merritt Kersey, the punch for Philadelphia. 
And this time, Kersey has hit a beauty. Oh, and it takes a Philadelphia bounce and will be down on the two-yard line. The exact reverse, the converse of the kick we saw executed by Bateman in the first quarter when they pinioned the Eagles on the Eagles' own one-yard line at that very end of the gridiron. Now the Cowboys are on the two. Not a pleasant situation for Dallas, Alex. You know, with the artificial turf, the ball's going to bounce like that once in a while. They're taking funnier bounces than they used to in the old days, Frank. Indeed, they do. And Alex, defensively, what does this mean to a defensive lineman? Now you got this Dallas Cowboy team in a hole. Well, there's, there, you're definitely going to play the run. They're gonna, you're not going to take a chance. I don't think Staubach is the kind of guy that's going to take a chance on the pass. And Roger begins from his own two-yard line. Motions his wide receiver, Pearson, out of the backfield. Hands off to Garrison, who has really nailed his progress, was stopped in the playing field, and he was driven all the way back to the end zone. Well... I'll tell you something. He's he's running into walls tonight. Uh, you know, uh, Philadelphia is up. Uh, they're playing at home. They got to win this game, and they're sky high. They love Mike McCormick. They want to win for him. They need this ball game. And kaboom! There he goes. That was Bergie. Bill Alex again. again. Right, Giffer. Filling that four hole as only he can do it. And they are giving him a lot more protection. The defensive tackles this week than they did last week. Letting him roam. Second down and ten. Getting the call is Newhouse. Newhouse slipping tackles, struggling and fighting out to the four-yard line. Bill Berge again over there to make the capper. Yeah, I like the help he got from number 30, Joe Lavender, cornerback, who incidentally is the only man in the NFL, gentlemen, who plays while wearing eyeglasses. What do you think of that, Gip? Well, it, you can't <laughs> see, you can't see. <laughs> A lot of newer contacts, some of them just uncomfortable with them. Does he have him in the helmet or around the helmet? There it, you know, right under that face mask. All right, it's third down and seven for Roger Staubach. Staubach from his own end zone, going out to Drew Pearson. And 65,000 Eagle fans like what they see. Good job of coverage by Lavender. Staubach had to throw it away. Roger now 0 for 6. A big weekend last week against Atlanta. 13 of 27, 252 yards. But tonight, he's 0 for 6. Now the pressure is on Mark Bateman. He'll be punting from his own end zone. That's his average thus far this evening. This one he will hurry to get away. Fair catch will be called for by Bill Bradley at the 35-yard line. The Eagles in fine field position. 30-yard punt by Bateman. 11-53 remaining in the half. No score. We'll be back. One of these batteries looks like no battery you've ever seen. It's a revolutionary new development from J.C. Penney. There are no filler caps. You never have to add water. It's the most powerful battery ever built for a passenger car. That's why J.C. Penney guarantees it unconditionally for as long as you own your car. If it fails, return it. We'll replace it free. Only at J.C. Penney Auto Centers or catalog desks. It's the last battery your car will ever need. Nero's the name. Everyone seems to be outside pressing my own toga with this no scorch iron from Hamilton Beach. Just set the dial, and this unique no scorch system tells when the iron's just right for any fabric. So I never have to worry about anything burning. It ends guesswork. It's self-cleaning, too, through the back, so the bottom's not... Ugh. The no scorch iron. It's so nice to fiddle around with. From the Hamilton Beach Scoville World of Appliances. Martin Sheen and Vic Morrow star in The California Kid, the Wednesday movie of the week, Wednesday at 8.30, 7.30 Central. Well, right there in the graphic, you see an interesting comparison. Philadelphia, the young and hopefully growing team. Dallas, the experienced team that knows what to do and how to do it with 10 players with 10 or more years' experience. Their problem, to ascertain exactly when they're getting too old to do the job and to be rebuilding in the background. Philadelphia right now with a big break following the 30-yard punt by Mara Payton. First and 10 from their own 35. Gabriel's looking for Carmichael. And he's going to go down by Bob Lilly. 
Bob Lilly, a 14-year veteran, an original cowboy, the first player they ever picked in their draft. With 11.45 to go in the second quarter, this much can be made by way of observation. Gabriel has not unraveled himself yet this season. He had a lot of shots at the very end of last week's game against St. Louis. The plain truth is, much as we love Gabe, he couldn't put his team in from inside the 10-yard line with four chances to do it. Tonight, he is not throwing well, and he is taking too long. Second down and 18. The ball is at the 44-yard line. The Thunder and Lightning is in there for the Cowboys. Jones and Martin as Gabriel goes to Harold Carmichael. He's picked up there by number 20, Mel Renfro. It'll be third down and 18, and we'll tell you a little bit about this Thunder and Lightning. That's the Thunder is called Larry Coe and Pat Toomey. They're the ordinarily, they're the starting defensive ends, but when there's a sure pass situation, Tom Landry sends in Ed Jones, his number one rookie, number 72, and Harvey Martin, number 79. Now, here's Jones, and, and I don't like the way he stands. I'll tell you the reason. He leans over too much, and if he's going to rush a passer, why not come up a little bit so that he has that extra second to get off that ball when the ball snapped? That's my only question mark. Third down and 18. Uh-oh. And down goes Gabriel. Hit there by Rodrigo Barnes. Rodrigo Barnes blitzing from his right line back to position. Really nailed Gabriel. You can't blame the Gabe for that, I'll tell you. I must uh, must say, Alex, after your talk about too tall Jones, let's look at this again. That was Barnes coming in on Gabe. It should be noted that neither Harvey Martin nor too tall Jones attended the University of Mars. <laughs> on a fourth down at 27 yards to go, Merritt Kersey comes in. The Eagles losing 27 yards as Gabriel now has also only connected one time. Both passers. One of 14 attempts between them. And Cliff Harris bobbles the ball into the end zone, but recovers and moves it out to the 11-yard line. A 51-yard punt by Kersey. 10-39 remaining in the first half, and still no score from Philadelphia. Test any car against our car. The 1975 Mercury Grand Marquis. Last August, a 74 Marquis was compared to models of its three leading competitors. In 29 areas, 87 specific tests by 150 car owners. They rated the Mercury superior in almost every single test. They compared riding comfort, quietness, and rated the Marquis superior. They tested handling ease, cornering ability, and found the Marquis superior. They compared quality and solidness like this. Watch the seats as I slam the door. Virtually no wobble in the Mercury. In every measure of quality tested, they rated the Marquis superior. And 122 out of 150 rated the Marquis superior overall. Now you do the testing. See your Mercury dealer for complete details. He'll give you all the help you need. Test any car against our 75 Mercury Marquis. At the sign of the cat. Well, the sign says Roger Scrambles, Roman Gambles, and Howard Rambles. Let me ramble about those two men. Tonight, they've been paragons of inefficiency. Between the two of them, up to this point, they have completed one out of 13 passes. First and 10 for Dallas. Newhouse and Garrison setbacks now for Roger Staubach. Newhouse. Newhouse gets four yards, moving out to the 14-yard line. This program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Right now, let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Robert Newhouse, heard in the first quarter, as was Calvin Hill. Newhouse damaged some ribs. He's back in action. We have not seen Calvin Hill since he was hurt. Second down and six. The ball at the 14. Garrison over the right side. And Garrison hits a couple of yards, moving out to the 17-yard line. Hit there by Jerry Patton. The toe of a man who overcame a physical handicap at birth, Tom Dempsey, holds the National Football League record. Set a few years ago against our colleague in the Detroit Lions, 
63 yards. That's right. Alex didn't believe it. Well, I could have blocked that one, but I figured the guy came out limping on the field. What was I supposed to do about that? I thought I'd let the guy kick the ball for crying out loud. He Great. kicked it out of the stadium. Great he did. Third down and two. The ball at the 17-yard line. Now back under a tremendous rush by Patton. Gets it off, and it's complete out there to Drew Pearson. And that had to be a perfectly timed pass because I don't believe Staubach saw Pearson on his break as he moved to the sideline. Big Patton was in there with the rush, number 77. 11-yard gain, a first down. Frank, I think in order for Staubach to be effective, he's going to have to run some more. We mentioned earlier in the first quarter that Staubach was throwing the ball on first down and second down with very little yardage. He's going to have to go back to his running game. He's going to have to keep the defense, you know, guessing as to what, what, what he's going to do. And as long as, the, you know, the defense doesn't know if it's going to be a pass or a run, then he's going to loosen him up a little bit. And I think you'll see his completion average come up a little bit. All right, he gets the first down. With an 11-yard pickup to Pearson. First down of 10, the ball to 29. Flag flies. Now back going deep, and he had Pearson out of the open, but I believe it's going to be called back because Pearson was in motion. Pearson coming in motion, misread the count, started downfield, tried to catch himself, but he didn't. So a 45-yard pickup is going to be nullified by another error. Staubach having it explained to him. I'm quite sure that's going to be the call. You're exactly right. It was an interesting battle between little Johnny Outlaw and Pearson. Pearson, watch it. Watch Pearson out muscle him and out maneuver. Well, but I'll tell you, tell you something, he was behind him in a good shape. It's that's back true, that but Outlaw, Outlaw judged that pass and came in to pick it off, and Pearson was just too tall. That will make it first and 15. The ball back at the 24 yard line. The two tight ends are now in for Dallas Dupree and Fugit. Newhouse. Newhouse running away from his blockers and picking up yardage, getting very close to the first down, out to the 37-yard line. He will be short, however. Steve Zabel moved over to make the stop for Philadelphia. Boy, this little guy has shown some kind of guts, Alex. He was shaken up. I thought he was seriously injured, and he's back in the ball game and producing. Well, I've been, I've been impressed with Newhouse. He's uh, carried six six times for 50 yards already tonight, and uh, he's doing a good job. He's a, he's a good football player, and Kelvin Hill's great, but the Newhouse is just as good as far as I'm concerned. All right, it's second down and three. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell. Alex Karras, no score. We're halfway through the second quarter from Philadelphia's Veterans Stadium. The Cowboys and the Eagles. Pearson motions to the right. Staubach going out with his little screen to Robert Newhouse. You saw the big tackle. Rayfield right out in front of it. That's what the attempt was incomplete. So it'll be third down now in three. You know, sometimes, Frank, when you see the ball go astray like that, you say, well, the guy is really not throwing real well. I think that he saw the defensive back come up. He knew it was going to take a big loss if he caught the ball, so he deliberately threw it out of bounds, and it happens once in a while like that. I think you're right, and sometimes the unpracticed eye will read something entirely different into it and actually maybe save an interception or a loss. Rogers' situation now at third down and three. The ball up to 31. Newhouse gets the call. He'll get the first down. And the middle man... Five foot ten, 205 pounds, saw the opening, slithered through, stopped by Jerry Patton, but he gets the first down at the 41. So Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports will bring you an event you've enjoyed before, the always popular Harlem Globetrotters performing in London. And at the mic, the former Globetrotter himself, Wilt Chamberlain, also featured the 25th running of the famed Southern 500 stock car race. Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Golden Richards in motion. Paul Garrison gets the call. It's over the 40 and breaks the tackle. And he's out to the 48-yard line. Now, that was uh, that was a play that the defensive right to end should have had. What happened was he made a commitment to the inside. He, he always has outside commitment, and he took a chance and went inside. The back is good. He's getting paid a lot of money. He saw that little uh, commitment that he made, and so he took it to the outside. 
I think you'll see it here on this play. There he goes to the. He, he took his commitment to the inside. Yeah, you're talking about 64 Turkey Jones. You know, Alex, I always thought you defensive linemen were a little jealous of those high paid backs. That why you beat them up all the time. Second down and three. Newhouse. And Newhouse finds a big hole. He moves down to the 46 yard line. Another Cowboy first down. He bolts through there. He accelerates at exactly the right moment. 64 Turkey Jones who you said moved inside when he should have taken the outside a moment ago came over here from Cleveland. The Eagles got him in exchange for Ben Hawkins the wide receiver from Arizona State a veteran who broke his leg a year ago and saw a little action and was just feeling his way in training camp this year. Jones had some good service with the Browns as the pass rush. Dallas now beginning to grind it out. First and 10 from the 46. 46 of the Eagles. A little over six minutes remaining in the first half. Draw back. Drew Pearson. He has it at the 25 yard line. Drew Pearson and Outlaw, number 20, points to Lavender, number 30, and just to say, he was your man. In any event, the completion is good for another Cowboy first down, 21 yards. Down to the 25. Okay, here comes Jones, 64, coming right around his tackle. He gets the stall back that time, but the ball's been released. Watch the referee. He's saying, uh uh, no, no, no. Don't you hurt that quarterback. You never did. <laughs> Tom Landry, the only coach the Cowboys have ever had, had them in the playoffs for the last eight years. Newhouse. Almost trips up, but he gets away and he gets three yards down to the 21 yard line. Frank, I think that's the power right now, as far as I'm concerned, of Dallas. They got Blaine Nye, they got John Nyland, they got a fine center. They're big, they're 260 pounds, and they pump that middle and they blow everybody out of there. And I think Berger really has his hands full tonight. He's doing a good job, but I think right now they're starting to get to him a little. Both those tackles for the Cowboys are 6'6 six, six and 260 pounds, and they are very wary on a defense that actually, and we were checking it out before the game, Alex, the defense is not as big as that offensive line, and that's a rarity in pro football. Second down and seven. The ball just short of the 21. The screen to Richards. Watch out. And he dropped the ball. Lewis got the ball. Dallas. 76, John Nyland. John Nyland came up with Richard's fumble that advanced for about three or four yards after he dropped it. It'll be first and goal for Dallas. Four six left, four five, counting down the second quarter. Still no score in the ball game, but Dallas now with an authentic threat and a break on that fumble recovery by Johnny Nyland. Johnny Nyland out of the University of Iowa, incidentally, hard. He's the second best football player that ever came out of there. The best, of course, was the young man who left college because he was too fat, but his mother said, go back, take off weight, and become a man. That was Alex Carroll. Dallas, first and goal. They're on the three-yard line of the Philadelphia Eagles. This is Doug Dennison. And the young rookie gets his first score. Touchdown, Dallas. And he worked to get in there, I'll tell you. Landry looking on as always never terribly impressed with anything but inside that man there is a lot more happening that appears on the surface. Let's look again leading the interference is Garrison number 32 and what a block he laid. Newhouse also with a block and Dennison just making the rest of it on his own. Doug Dennison from Pootstown State College in Pennsylvania signed as a free agent. Mac Percival. Makes it seven for the Cowboys, nothing for the Philadelphia Eagles. A very happy Robert Newhouse with a fine block for Doug Dennison. We'll be back right after this message. This is Aliceville, Alabama. <laughs> You'd think cotton is about all you can grow in hot country like this. But Lamar Cantaloo, warehouser forester, is one man who knows better. His whole life is wrapped up in trees, growing on 472,000 acres in the south. The Aliceville nursery is part of his job, 
where 18 million loblolly pine seedlings are grown each year. They'll become the third generation forest. Fast growers that'll be as tall as Lamar in just three years. Lamar Cantaloupe, one of the great foresters of the South. Living proof that if someone really cares, our managed forests can go on forever. Weyerhaeuser, the tree growing company. Three minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first half. The Dallas Cowboys just ground out 90 yards, scoring in 12 plays to lead the Philadelphia Eagles 7 to nothing. Mac Percival to kick off deep. Number 27, Bo James. Number 33, Randy Jackson. This is Randy Jackson at the five-yard line. Jackson out over the 20 to the 22-yard line. 17-yard run. By Randy Jackson. Well, so far this game, what's plaguing the Philadelphia fans, and understandably so, is what plagued them a week ago. The Eagles supposed to be an explosive offensive team with almost no offensive at all. And with a quarterback like Gabriel, as the guy who scored for Dallas, and receivers like Carmichael and Young, doesn't make sense. Philadelphia moving from their own 21-yard line. Draw play goes to Bulac. He gets three yards up to the 24. NCAA Regional College Football comes up next Saturday. ABC will bring you several classics around the country. The Longhorns of Texas, which we talked about a moment ago, under head coach Darrell Royal, will be visiting Texas Tech. Washington State will take on Illinois. And Maryland goes up against North Carolina. And Holy Cross will be meeting Harvard in the Ivy League. Check your local listings for the game in your region. Second down and eight. Gabriel going to Sullivan over the middle. He'll be short of the first down as he's nailed hard by Leroy Jordan and Dave Edwards. Now that's Gabriel's second completion of the game to Tom Sullivan, whom, as uh, Frank noted earlier, caught 50 passes last year and gained over 960 yards. The Eagles are not supposed to be without a ground game either. Their offensive line is not bad. And runners like Bulash and Sullivan should give them a complimentary ground game to their aerial attack. But they haven't been able to get started. Third down and a long two. Eagles in the running formation, but it'll be tough. And twice now, Philadelphia against that rugged Dallas defense have gone with the run. This time it's very close. Bulash pounding and driving, but I don't believe he made the first down. They've only made one first down thus far this game, Giffer. This measurement will be reasonably close, but I think you're right. I don't believe he made it. Now let's stretch it out, gentlemen. No, he did not make it. The length of a football and a half, perhaps. So the Eagles must punt again, and the fans register their displeasure. There's John Nyland, University of Iowa. And we have the two-minute warning. For 1975, Lincoln Mercury took the kind of leg room and head room you get in an average mid-size car, then engineered it into a smaller car for good gas mileage. Introducing America's new precision-sized luxury car, Mercury Monarch. Over a foot shorter than last year's average mid-size car, Monarch gives five adults more headroom and only an inch and a half less leg room. Monarch's functional luxuries include Fully reclining bucket seats, deep, wide, instruments and controls clustered within easy reach, even an optional moonroof. Monarch Gears 256 is engineered for 18 to 26 miles per gallon under highway conditions, 14 to 18 under city conditions. And this two-door Monarch sticker price, including optional white wall, starts under $3,800. Delivery, dealer prep, title, and taxes extra. Now there's a precision size Monarch at the sign of the cap. The $6 million man must pilot a small plane through a violent storm to save a stricken senator. Friday at 8.30, 7.30 Central. Some of the little lovelies here in Philadelphia, they do too have here, Alex. Well, that one girl looks exactly like my wife would like to look. 
Well, the Philadelphia Lovelies just joined us. Mike Douglas in the booth. Giffer and I appeared on the show today. Giffer stole the show. I don't think he'll like you putting it that way, though. <laughs> All right, on fourth down, we have Merritt Kersey. He'll punt to Cliff Harris and Golden Richards. Richards, 83, Harris, 43. Kersey with a lot of time and not a very long kick. The fair catch called for by Richards at the 37-yard line. So Dallas, who scored the last time they had the ball in 12 plays, traveling 90 yards, takes over again. One fifty-three remaining in the first half. Ah, there he is, Mike Douglas. Can I have a quick mic for Mike? Can we have a lean over and talk in him? Mike? I'll talk take to it your out. chest. You're going to Russia tomorrow, aren't you? Going tomorrow night, yes. Have a good trip. We'll talk to you more about it later. Thank you. Back Very to exciting. the gift for in the game. From their own thirty-seven, the Dallas Cowboys. Salback going out to his tight end, Billy Joe Dupree. Played out there for a gain of seven out to the 42-yard line. Billy Joe Dupree, well, we talked about, a lot about Charlie Young and the Philadelphia Eagles at 55 last year, but, well, let's come back to another star in his own right. <laughs> Way to go, Jeffrey. The point I wanted to bring out is one of the shows you'll be doing over there is with little and lovely Olga Corbett, who became an international sensation on our Olympic cover. Looking forward to that, Howard. Can you give me any advice and questions? No, but I think if I were you, I'd call Jim McKay before you leave. Back to the gift. Okay. Second down and three. The ball at the 43 of the Dallas Cowboys. Callback is going up again. This time he goes to Garrison. And Garrison has the first down. He's out to the 48-yard line. Hit there by Zabel. Steve Zabel, number 89. Steve Zabel. He's coming off season where he had Achilles surgery in his ankle. That's very difficult to come off an Achilles. I haven't seen too many guys did it. Amici ended his career with it and a lot of other great ones. Harlan Hill and with the Chicago Bears. What ended your career, Alex? Varicose veins and just old age. <laughs> Bob Hayes comes into the lineup, number 22, the former gold medal winner at Tokyo. He's at the top of your screen and he can fly still. Oh. Going out to Pearson, and Pearson has another first down. He also kills the clock, which now shows 133. Oh, I might have been premature. Does he have the first down? There was a real wobbler pass. Here comes Pearson doing what he does best. Cutting to the outside. It's a nice safe pass. Here comes a wobbler. You can read Pete Rosell's name on that ball. It's such a bad thrown ball, but he still catches it and knocks, gets knocked Interesting, out Interesting, though, Alex. Did you see... Pearson looked over at Lavender to ascertain his position as the ball was on its way to him. Took his eye off the ball momentarily. Still made the catch easily, of course. Inscrutable Tom Landry. First and ten. The ball is at the Eagles' 43-yard line. The Cowboys chipping away. They lead seven to nothing. Newhouse and he pounds for four yards down to the 39-yard line, hit by Bill Berge. All right, the Cowboys now will use the timeout. Staubach moving over to talk to head coach Tom Landry. And Berge now moving to the sidelines to discuss strategy at his bench. Tom Landry, in the last six years, his teams have won at least 10 games or more. Incredible record. Live from Madison Square Garden, October the 13th. It's himself, Howard. And now the end is near. Frank Sinatra, Old Blue Eyes is back. Main event from Madison Square Garden. Would you sing that again? I have no desire, Perham Charlie, to rupture my career, Frank. You take over. With 1.28 remaining in the half, Starback conferring with Tom Landry. Did you ever go to the sidelines, Alex, and talk it over with the coach? You were a captain, weren't you? Yeah, but I, I, there was nothing we could talk about. We had two plays, and he said, if neither one of them work, beat the heck out of them. <laughs> In the early years of Joe Schmidt's coaching tenure with the Lions, he was a very close friend, of course, of Alex. He would call Alex in every day, say, how am I doing with the boys? Seek Alex's advice. Then as Joe's confidence grew, so did the displeasure with which he viewed Karras grow. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, set to go. Second down and six. One twenty-eight remaining in the half. The Cowboys leading seven to nothing. Mike McCormick looking on, just having instructed his defensive captain Bill Berge as to what he thinks the Cowboys might come with. Two timeouts remaining for Dallas. And Staubach going deep. Deep to his tight end, Fugit. Picked up there by Randy Logan, and good coverage it was. Rogers, six of his last eight. Their completions. And they're going 0 for 6. Excuse me, Frank. That was a good play. Good uh, good uh, idea on the, on the pass receiver. Now, he's going down the field. He's going to get good coverage all the way. There could have been very much of an interception here, but he, he actually jarred the defender away from the ball. That's what you're supposed to do when you think that there's going to be an interception. And he goes over there and he asks the referee about it. And of course, he turns his back. There's an exciting man, Frank, uh, Howard. I'd love to play for him. I'd have fallen asleep <laughs> on him most of the time. Well, a little more than a look, Alex. Third down and seven. Here goes the screen, and this is Newhouse. Good reaction by the Eagles defense, and Newhouse will be, I believe, short of the Cowboy first down. The Cowboys screaming for a timeout. It's going to be very close, Keffer. He fell forward. I had him about a yard and a half back of the first down marker. Let's look at it again in slow motion, Alex. Well, I think you're going to see Nyland. I think you're going to see Nyland, what we call slip locking. And what he does is he gets down. Here comes the play. He lets him go, influences him. Out, and then he goes right out to that screen. He influences him to the outside. Then he comes right down on that screen to watch him do his job. Whoopee. Any, anytime, you, anytime you're doing a screen, you want that weak side tackle to go to the outside, not to give too much pressure to the inside. And as you can see, Newhouse coming up just short of the first down. That's the situation at the moment. One minute and 11 seconds remaining in the first half. The Cowboys out in front, seven to nothing. Roger Staubach coming in with Tom Landry's play. And it'll be fourth down and a matter of inches. You call that exactly right, Giff. The eyesight is extraordinary. Just short. Fourth down, one time out remaining. You know, you mentioned Landry, Alex. I not only played with him, but I also played under him as a coach. He was both a player and a coach for the Giants. And the man actually has so much going on inside of him, and he's been criticized, criticized many times by our own colleague, Don, Don Meredith, but almost affectionately in a way. He's meant a great deal to many players over the years, and he has a fantastic record. In other words, he's doing what he's supposed to do. Dennison. Oh, ho. Whoa, and he, well, did he make it? This will be very close again. Will Wynn got in there in a hurry, came out in a hurry, and is gesticulating that the Cowboys did not make it. I don't know, Giff. What's your view of this one? Before they measure now. I think it's going to be very close, Howard. <laughs> in any event, there's only one timeout remaining, and clock is stopped while they measure. No, they did not. Good defensive effort by the right side of that Eagles line. Jerry Patton and Joe Jones. And the Eagles with 58 seconds take over. Here comes John Nyland again, who's an all-pro guard. He's popping right out, and uh, and the, he didn't influence that tackle. The tackle went right to the outside and did his job on that outside, and of course, they didn't make that first down, first down, and Nyland didn't do a good job on that play. He usually does, though. 58 seconds remaining in the first half. The Cowboys in front, 7 to nothing. Roman Gabriel has all three of his timeouts, but he sends Bulash over the left side. Brother Tom Sullivan. Sullivan gets seven yards as the Cowboys, obviously, were thinking past. And some of the booing Philadelphia Eagle fans must have been thinking past. It's rather obvious that Roman is not going to be taking any risk. He has three timeouts, but he's letting the clock tick out here in the first half. Goes with the screen out to Norm Bullock. Bullock had the first down. He fumbled it, and I believe Dallas has it. 
Indeed they do. So trying to play safe. Didn't come up that way for Philadelphia. Dallas will have 19 seconds showing on the clock. The fans of Philadelphia have never been notorious for tolerance. Ball is at the 47 yard line of the Eagles. Dallas has the football. They have one timeout remaining. Puts Pearson to the bottom of your screen. Golden Richards at the top. And the attempt with to Newhouse overthrown. Cowboys but the only points in this game on a 90 yard drive that began on their own 10 yard line by Max by Doug Dennison coming in from four yards out almost exclusively on the ground two pass completions during that drive wide receivers now for Roger Staubach who can be expected to put the ball in the air Bob Hayes has come in he's number 22 top of your screen and Drew Pearson, number 88, bottom of your screen. Now back in trouble, scrambling around and gets rid of the ball out there to Bob Hayes. Hayes has the first down, six seconds now showing, remaining in the first half. And the moving of the goalpost to the back of the end zone has become quite a factor in pro football. Be quite a kick for Mac Percival, I'll tell you. And he trots onto the field. The attempt will be from, well, it'll be an attempt of about 50 47 yards. yards. Probably closer to 50, Giff. Of course, the regular Dallas kicker is out for the year, Tony Fritch, and they acquired, uh, the Cowboys did, acquired Percival from the Bears recently to compensate for the loss of their regular kicker. And he was delighted to be here. He's from Texas. And he was sharing the duties up there with the Chicago Bears with Merle Roeder. And he has the full load at the moment. The tip will come from the 48-yard line. Greg Morton will do the holding. Action. Oh, it's blocked. Blocked. Oh, and the clock shows no time remaining as Bradley just gets back onto the field of play. The Dallas Cowboys lead the Philadelphia Eagles 7-0. Tom Landry moving in with the Cowboys to regroup. Some great games around the NFL yesterday. We'll be back with some of those highlights in just a moment. The spirit of United Airlines Friendship Service. It comes from making things a little easier for someone else. We like to think it's catching. Spread a little friendship, let it show what to grow. Feel it catching on now, everywhere you go. Come along, sing a song, people, now's the time. Reach out in friendship, round your When you show a little extra friendship, sooner or later, it'll come right back at you. The friendly side of your land, United Airlines. Richard Boone stars on The Great Niagara, the Tuesday movie, tomorrow. Well, we're back live at Veterans Stadium, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, a halftime score, and I must say we did not have an overwhelming amount of action. The Dallas Cowboys, seven, the Philadelphia Eagles, nothing. As for the second game in a row, the Eagles are failing to show much in the way of offense. In the first half, though, in the second quarter, Dallas scored the result of a 90-yard drive in 12 plays, nine of which were on the ground, engineered by Roger the Dodgers Starback. Two completed passes, one incomplete. And you're looking at Doug Dennison, number 21, rookie from Touchdown State. 
who has a sign here in his behalf as he moves in for the score, getting perhaps the last yard and a half on his own. Then just before the half ended, Mac Percival tried a field goal from way out. The, it was a, would have been a 48-yard kick. Well, more than that, really. And Joe Jones, Turkey Jones, number 64, blocked it. So our score, Dallas 7 and Philadelphia nothing. Now, our weekly halftime feature, of course. The highlights of the games that took place yesterday. The most exciting plays, some of the most important games. Halftime highlights are brought to you by... Time highlights are brought to you by White Owl. That's who. Here we go with the highlights. Number 22 of the Miami Dolphins in slow motion, as you see him, is Mercury Morris. Missed the game a week ago when the Patriots upset the Super Bowl champion Miami Dolphins. But now in Rich Stadium, Buffalo, ready to go against the Buffalo Bills who upset the Oakland Raiders last Monday night, 21 to 20. Buffalo takes an early three to nothing lead over the Dolphins, but in game action now, Bob Greasy with the Dolphins trailing three to nothing, Throws a one-yard touchdown pass to Jim Mandich, the tight end, number 88. The Dolphins lead 7-3. to three. Moving on to third quarter action, it's Miami 14, Buffalo 3. But the juice has a word for it and a run for it. Up the middle, 22 yards. Fumble into the end zone. Recovery by Ahmad Rashad. And Buffalo is back in the game at 14-9. The conversion missed. Three minutes and 12 seconds gone in the fourth quarter. It's still 14 to nine. Watch Zonka, 39 block. Watch the accompanying block. And watch Mercury Morris, number 22, through the hole, cutting back, eluding tackle, moving straight ahead, 17 yards. Touchdown, Miami is back, beating Buffalo 24 to 16. Little Mac Heron. A refugee, in effect, from Canada in a football sense. Number 42 to the left of your screen. Sam Cunningham, number 39 to the right. The Patriots at Yale Bowl against the Giants. First quarter, the Giants with the ball. Sneed, 16 to 30, Johnson. He breaks two, three, tackles in for the touchdown. The Giants take a first quarter, seven to nothing lead. It's two minutes or thereabouts remaining in the first quarter. 16, Plunkett to Little Mac Heron, 42, touchdown. The game is tied at seven all. Moving to second quarter action. The Giants leading 14 to 7. Plunkett back in the pocket. Good protection. Downfield. Randy Bataha, 38 yards. Touchdown. 14 to 14 tie. In the second half, the Patriots moved ahead 21 to 14. And then little Mac Heron again on a four-yard sweep around the right side. 28-14, and on the Patriots went, unbeaten, 2-0 to win it, 28-20. to Who makes cigars mild as a breeze? Who? White House, that's who. Great taste and Americans from five. At two for a quarter, you ought to know who, you ought to know who, White Owl, that's who. That's Tommy Prothro, head coach, San Diego Chargers, fired previously by the L.A. Rams. Determined to prove himself at Riverfront Stadium against the Cincinnati Bengals. And that's Glenn Bonner, number 20 run. A rookie from Washington moving in for a score. San Diego surprisingly leads seven to nothing. But that's Booby Clark, the converted tight end. Had such a brilliant year a year ago. 12 yards, touchdown for the Cincinnati Bengals. At that point, Cincinnati goes on top, 14 to 13. It's third quarter action. It's 17 to 13 now as San Diego begins to engineer a comeback drive. That was Don Fouts to Jim Byrne. This is Don Fouts to the tight end, Gary Paris. Who is Don Fouts? 
a second-year man beginning to find himself in the National Football League. Now this is three plays late. And the handoff to Don Woods. Woods, number 33, racing upfield 21 yards to the Cincinnati 21. And a truly amazing upset is in the make. Now it's three plays later, and that's Young Fouts himself. Touchdown plunge, quarterback sneak or rush, as you would call it. And San Diego amazingly upsets Cincinnati 20 to 17. Recognize head coach Don Coyell working miracles with the St. Louis Cardinals. Let's look at game action. The Redskins leading three to nothing. Kilma hit, fumbles. Ron Jankowski picks up the football. He will run unmolestedly downfield for a touchdown as the Cardinals assume a 7-3 lead over the Redskins, the very score by which they upset the Eagles a week ago. All right, it's 7-3. The pitch out to Terry Metcalf. Watch this young man accelerate. Now watch him high step. Nobody's going to touch this speedster. St. Louis goes ahead 14-3, winds up with another upset victory, 17-10. The Denver Broncos in a huddle. John Ralston, their coach, exhorts them on. Mile High Stadium, Denver. The Broncos against the powerhouse Steelers. Four minutes into the first quarter. Charlie Johnson, 12. Throws to 24. Otis Armstrong out of Purdue. Number one draft choice a year ago. And the Bronx take a 7 to nothing lead over the Steelers. But it's just four plays late. Jefferson Street, Joe Giddens. Sets up the screen to Steve Davis. Watch this young man go. The Steelers have nothing but talent. One tackle broken. Another tackler couldn't hang on to the hip. Still another. Steve cutting back across field. Steve Davis going 61 yards. Touchdown. The score is tied at seven. This Denver team, though, is a team that has arrived. That's Charlie Johnson throwing the Haven Moses. Still first quarter action. Touchdown. The Bronx lead it. 14 to 7. And it's just a couple of minutes later. And that's John Keyworth in for a yard and the score. Denver 21, Pittsburgh 7. Now, Charlie Johnson. This is the third play in the third quarter. Mean Joe Green comes in and hits it. Denver leading at the time 21 to 14. Charlie Johnson is put out of the game. What a ball game this was. 3-6 remaining in the third quarter. The score tied at 21. Steve Ramsey now in at quarterback. Hits the tight end. Riley Odoms, who came on so strongly a year ago. Denver reassumes the lead at 28-21. But it doesn't take Jefferson Street Joe very long. He hits the rookie wide receiver who created such a commotion in the preseason play, John Stallworth. Good for 48 yards. And just five plays late. 35, Steve Davis again. Touchdown. That knotted the score at 28-28. Then the Pittsburgh Steelers moved ahead 35-28. We're midway in the fourth quarter. Ramsey back to throw. Hit as he throws, but he connects with little Otis Armstrong again. Touchdown. The score is tied at 35-35. Look at the scoreboard. Five seconds left. Roy Garella about to attempt a game-winning field goal. The kick is blocked by Bill Thompson, number 36, out of Maryland State. That's what it was called then. 
And so the game went into overtime. And they played a full period, a scoreless full period. The score tied at 35-35, a disappointment for Chuck Knoll of the Steelers. Halftime highlights have been brought to you by Mild as a Breeze White Owl. That's who. And you see the score at halftime, 7-0, Dallas over Philadelphia. We're live at Veterans Stadium in South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And you see more of the signs that populate the stands all the way around the entire arena. And with us again at halftime is our new colleague, number 71 of the Detroit Lions, Alex Garris. And I must say, Alex, you should be happy with this jacket. It's closer to a fit. No, it's not. It's even worse than it was last week. This is Rune Arledge's coat. It's a size 44 with three inch fleece for crying out loud. I didn't know the man was deformed. Arledge looks heavier to me than you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this. This is quite a show, you know, and uh, this is my second time. And it's really a freak circus. I think this is terrific. The way you incite this, this whole crowd is amazing. Look at that. Send me to the World Football League, which is where we brought you from. How do you like that? Listen, Alex, getting back to the game. The perplexing thing, the continued absence of offense on the part of the Philadelphia Eagles. The failure virtually ever to throw to 86. Charlie Young, the superb tight end. How do you account for it? Well, I was going to say that. They haven't thrown to Charlie Young all night. And uh, what I thought they were going to do, or what Roman usually does, is he plays a controlled offensive pass game. He throws an eight-yarder, a nine-yarder. He gets down the field. He doesn't throw a lot of bombs. Tonight, he's come out and he's thrown Carmichael uh, six or seven times way down the field. It's not the Roman Gabriel that I thought I'd seen it this evening. On the other hand, Staubach come out, uh, came out, and with the uh, second down and a few yards to go, he threw the ball, too, in the first quarter. So, consequently, uh, I think both uh, uh, quarterbacks weren't, wasn't doing what I thought they'd do. So, uh, consequently, got a 7 and nothing score. Staubach's efficiency materially improved. Uh, when they started running the yeah. ball, Howard. They the started running the ball, then they, then they set up the pass. Okay, now, look at that. World heavy... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to fight you, Alex. It's, you oh, know, verbally? Yes, I'll match you in vocal truculence. Vocal what? <laughs> truculence. It's, you know, it's so amazing. Hey, look at Roman there on the monitor. He can't be happy with himself. No, he doesn't have a good... You know, they only had uh, two first downs the first, uh, the, the whole first half, and that's not like Roman Gabriel. I'm sure he's very upset about the whole thing. Three for nine is not a good night for Gabriel. Well, what do you think they're going to do this half? Well, there's no, no, no question that they're going to have to go back to what they do best, and that's to throw the short passes. Uh, they're definitely a passing game. Uh, they, they like to pass the, pass the ball, but they like to keep it short, and I think they're going to have to do that. Charlie Young's got to catch some some passes tonight or else they're not going to be able to put any well, score on it. Well, they're going to have to get the ball first and they're going to have to stop Dallas to do that. Dallas, as I reco recollect it, will be receiving at the start of this half. Philadelphia kicking off. Under any circumstances, we're close to the kickoff. Let's return it to the Gipper. Thank you, Coach, and thank you, Alex. And ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the Dallas Cowboys versus the Philadelphia Eagles is being brought to you by Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Home of the diehard battery and the Sears steel belted radial tire. And by Lincoln Mercury, who invites you to see all their new 75s, including the new precision size Monarch. Friday, September the 27th, the day of the cat. The second half about ready to get underway. The Dallas Cowboys leading the Eagles 7 to nothing. <laughs> I'm a lineman. I depend on my car to get to work. Sometimes the weather is 20, 25 below. I never use anything but Prestone 2 winter summer protection. Only Prestone 2 has a patented silicone silicate formula. The Prestone inhibitor system shields and preserves metal against rust and corrosion. Winter, summer, count on it. If you can't trust Prestone, who can you trust? It does the job for me. That's My Mama, Wednesday night at 8, 7 Central, here on ABC. A jam-packed Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, over 65,000 fans on hand. 
as Tom Dempsey gets set to kick off the second half. The first half, the Cowboys dominated play. And certainly in first downs, but they lead by only 7 and nothing. Dempsey kicks deep. It'll be taken by Dennis Morgan, a rookie from Western Illinois. And Morgan is hit at the 12-yard line and gets out to the 24-yard line. 23-yard return. Offensively for the Dallas Cowboys, we'll anticipate, of course, Roger Staubach being in their quarterback. His setbacks, number 32, Walt Garrison and 44, Robert Newhouse. Who came in late, we'll tell you that Calvin Hill, the all-pro fullback for the Cowboys, apparently re-injured a toe that he hurt last week against Atlanta. He will not be back in action. The wide receivers are 88, Drew Pearson, and Golden Richardson's 83. All right now, they go with the two tight ends. Billy Joe to 389, Cubitt 84. Newhouse. And Newhouse goes down as Bill Berge reads the play beautifully, coming across, and the safety man, Randy Logan, came up quickly from his position. There's no question about Berge taking the key on this particular play. The guard moved, the guard moved to his right, and so did Berge. Now watch Berge come right through. There he goes. He sees the he sees the play of the guard. He comes right out, nice right through. Does a good job. And then there's a there's a there's a there's a back that comes up and moves up really quick on this play too. Logan was there, and Steve Zabel, the linebacker, was also there. A loss of four yards, all the way back to the 20-yard line. Allen checks the snap number with Roger Staubach. That's the left guard for the Cowboys. Pearson motioning towards you. Play fake by Staubach. He goes with the screen over to his tight end. They go to three, and that was spread beautifully. Bill Wynn, number 71, spread that screen to Dupree to perfection. Well, we've only had a couple of plays from scrimmage, Alex, but Mike McCormick must have done something in that dressing room because the Eagles have come out all charged up. Well, I, I certainly think there's a psychological lift, too, when they blocked that uh, field goal that could have been very easily 10, 10 to nothing, and they're still in the ball game now at 7 to nothing. Another loss of five. It'll be third down and 19. And this is when the Eagles will really be turning it on. Ball back. Puts Pearson out to the left. He's picked up there by Joe Lavender. He's another wide receiver. Pearson goes out to the right to be picked up by John Outlaw. The Eagles in their prevent defense. Four linebackers and three front men. Ball back. Nevertheless, under pressure. Eludes Berge, then he goes down at the 24. Chased there by Jerry Patton. Far short of the first down, and the Cowboys will have to turn it over to what appears to be a fired-up Eagle team. Calvin Hill looking on from the sideline. Berg is big toe, re-injured his big toe in the first quarter. He will not be back into action. Mar Bateman comes in for Dallas. The single safety for Philadelphia, Bill Bradley, and he can be dangerous. Led the league and punt returns in 1971. Flags fly. As Bradley calls for their fair catch at his own 40. 36-yard punt. Again, a flag is down. I think there's an illegal procedure against Dallas on that particular play. I think that's what they're calling right now. I think you're right. Mr. Bateman will... Well, they're going to accept it. They're going to decline the penalty and take the football. All right. So Philadelphia will take over. First to 10, they'll move from their own 40-yard line. Newhouse apparently has injured something else. Now he's getting taped up on his the left leg. He's getting taped up, shaking his head, saying, man, i got to get back in there. Would you have declined that penalty, Alex? Answer it later. We're back to the action. All right, Roman Gabriel back at quarterback. Number five, had his problems in the first half. His setbacks are 25, Sullivan. Boulash, 36. It's the Sullivan... And he runs right into the arms of Big Bob Lilly. He maybe gets a yard. Wide well, receivers for Philadelphia. Don Zimmerman, number 80. Carmichael, 17. They're tight ends starting out. There's one thing really you don't do against Bob Lilly, and that's not to block him. Nobody blocks Bob Lilly. He moves laterally, laterally as good as anyone does. I think there's an effort to block him, but he's moving right down the line. It's against Wayne Key, and he just knocks him right down. Knocks, knocks the ball carrier right down. Lilly, Lilly's great laterally. Second down and nine. There's a dog right there. That was a dog. 
Cornell Green on the safety blitz. Cornell Green, the 13-year veteran. We were talking about experience, Alex and Howard, earlier in the game. Interesting to me that Dallas, in their secondary of Waters, Green, Harris, and Renfro, and their linebackers, they have 56 years of experience. In contrast to the Eagles secondary, the same seven players who have 26 years of experience. Now they put two tall Jones in the, in the, in the uh, defense to rush the passer. Let's see what, what kind of a job he does on this one. And Harvey Martin is in there. Two tall Jones is 72. He's will be at the top of your screen. Jones is Martin 79. The screen pass goes to Bulos. And Cliff Harris nails Bulos after a gain of three. And I mean he nailed it. I still would not have de declined that penalty and taken the football, Alex, to get back to my earlier question leading up to that whole sequence of downs. And Gabe is obviously upset with himself and I guess with the booze of the fans. But well, he still had the ball in pretty good position on the 40. A lot of things could have happened if had they kicked the ball over again. I, I think it did. I think I would have declined that penalty and taken it on the 40. In any event, we see Merritt Kersey, the rookie from Westchester State, doing the punting for Philadelphia. And not a good kick. And it's marked out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Dallas will take over. 10-25 remaining in the third quarter. Dallas out in front of the Eagles, 7-0. We'll be back in Philadelphia after this. Morocco. Blistering hot desert. Twisting, turning roads. If a set of tires could survive this kind of punishment, you'd figure that'd be proof enough. But it wasn't. We took the same set of Sears steel-belted radios that ran Morocco and put them on American roads to see what they had left. 72,400 miles later, they're still going strong. Radial design, two steel belts. The Sears steel-belted radio, only at Sears. First he gets a new car. And I get the old one. Then he leaves his car in the garage. And mine sits outside. And now I have to give him a start. I don't know what I'd like to give him. What, dear? A diehard of your very own. Dear. The Sears diehard. Ask the woman who owns one. So lonely at Sears. Look at those halftime statistics, folks, as a vivid evidence of Philadelphia's offensive futility. 27 yards gained passing, only 47 rushing, and that's reflected in the first down figures, only two first downs. So clearly, Dallas has been dominant, though not overwhelmingly so. They've had their own deficiencies tonight. It's still a ball game. And Philadelphia, with a weak punting game, uh, again, has given Dallas good field position. They move now from their own 34-yard line. The two tight ends. Fugit and Dupree are there. This is Newhouse, and he slips and goes down. And Newhouse is not 100%. We told you Calvin Hill is out. Newhouse was hurt. And he came back into play. Look at that fellow's nose, Alex. Did that ever happen to you? The car. Well, you know, he has that darn face mask wide open up there in the middle. He should have a nose like that once in a while. I had the big rim around it. I couldn't get to the nose. Never got damaged at all, did you? Through Abs all the years. Absolutely not. I stayed away from everybody. <laughs> Second down now and 12. A loss of two. The ball up to 32 of the Dallas Cowboys. 9.46 remaining in the third quarter. Flags flying all over the place. The pass goes out to uh, William Houston, who hits the ball out to the 44-yard line. But again, flags are down. It was a gain of 13. Three times, Staubach has successfully used that precise pass pattern tonight, Alex. Well, it's a safe pass pattern. If, if, he, if the receiver doesn't catch it, it's going to go out of bounds. It's what we like to cons consider a very safe way of throwing the football. Roger the Dodger. He's written a new book, by the way, Gift, together with a couple of other gentlemen, published by Word. It's called Staubach, First Town, Lifetime to Go. If he writes like he plays, it'll be worthwhile. Illegal procedure against Dallas. That makes a second down and 17. Pearson comes out of the pass situation to the bottom of your screen. Roger 
Heading it off to Drew Pearson, but he can't hold on to it. Good coverage by Philadelphia. Roger again under pressure. And Alex, this is one of the fine offensive lines in football. I think anyone will admit that. And yet, a very, well, it's not a great defensive line of Philadelphia. It's putting the pressure well, on. Well, they're playing back. stubbornly. And that was a dangerous ball to throw because 56, Dean Halverson, a former Ram who surprised the Eagles with his play this year. There's the inscrutable one. Not so inscrutable that time. Little show of anger. Halverson almost picked it off, and he'd had clear sailing. Third down and 17. I've noticed Starbuck doesn't want to run the ball this year, Howard. <laughs> Starbuck, and he gets it out there to Pearson, who has the first down, and he threw that in brilliantly. Staubach going back, slipped, and Pearson found that empty gap out there in the Eagles' defense, and the Cowboys have a first down. They're inside the Eagle territory at the 48. You know, it's tough when you're playing defense and you're and you're going into the last half and you play, you know, as good as you can play and you get no uh, offense at all. Defensive ball players get a little upset about it. Once in a while, they'll run over the quarterback and say, how much is a touchdown? You know, they figure maybe they don't know anymore. In our case, our quarterback used to yell out, five points? <laughs> The Thawback started out 0 for 6. He's now 10 of 20 for 113 yards. Newhouse. And Patton holds on to Newhouse after he gains two. Down to the 46. Robert Newhouse out of the University of Houston. Gained almost 3,000 yards there. Scoring 19 touchdowns. Filled in last year behind Calvin Hill when he was injured last year. Got a lot of experience as a rookie. And has paid off. Because Calvin Hill, as Howard mentioned, will be one of those six members of this Dallas team that will be moving on to the WFL in the future. Second down and eight. And Garrison this time picks up a couple of yards as Philadelphia toughens up. Jerry Patton in there to make the stop. Actually, there were eight members originally of this Cowboy unit to sign with the WFL. Two of them were traded, Otto Stowe and Mike Montgomery. Exactly right. You talk about toughening up. We've got a team next Monday night that's really toughened up. The Denver Broncos of Johnny Ralston with an awful lot of talent. Charlie Johnson will be back in action. Shoulder injury yes. yesterday, but he'll be back against the Redskins. From the nation's capital next Monday night. But right now, the Cowboys look over a third down and seven with the 45-yard line of the Philadelphia Eagles. They have a slim lead of seven to nothing. Garrison open in the flat and Roger dumps it off. Garrison trying for the first down and he's very close to it. Tackle finally by Steve Zabel and number 20 John Outlaw. Now let's see if they allow him that stretch. Garrison who well he never gives up. He's not going to be the big play for you. He's not going to be the big play man for you, but he yeah, stays in there all the time, man. He's never seen it before. And this time he battles for the first down. This program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Right now, let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Well, there, ladies and gentlemen, is Two Tall Jones, 12 foot 8, 8,621 pounds, and breathes fire. <laughs> what did they say last week? He had three sacks, he blocked two passes, and he had five scares. Incredible game as a rookie in the first game against Atlanta. Dallas, first and ten. They're on the 39-yard line of Philadelphia. Dominating in possession, if not the scoreboard. However, they lead seven and nothing. Newhouse nailed right at the line of scrimmage. Zabel and Patton, and Patton is playing a fine football game. Jerry Patton, the defensive right tackle. He is. He's been in a lot of plays tonight. This is a critical series, I think, for the Eagles. They must hold to stay in this ball game, Alex. Dallas has been chewing up the clock the whole quarter. We have about six minutes and ten seconds left to go in the third quarter. And you know, so far Dallas has not been scored on. They they, they were uh, they were scoreless. No one could score on them last week. And of course, this uh, this week Atlanta didn't do it. Uh, maybe the Eagles won't be able to do it. 
Second down, a little more than a yard for Dallas. Roger with the screen. He goes out to Drew Pearson. Neely, the big tackle, is out in front, as was Nylon. Pearson coughs up the football, but it goes out of bounds. A gain of eight. It's going to be third down and two. Big, swift offensive lineman for the Cowboys. That time you saw Ralph Neely, a 10-year veteran of 260 pounds, moving out in front of that play. Important down now for the Cowboys. And the two tight ends are back in the game. Billy Joe Dupree, number 89, James Dugget, number 84. Ordinarily, you would anticipate the run. Call is Garrison, and Garrison is close to another first down. Did you see that face of Picard's a moment ago, Alex? There's no mistaking. He has a deviated septum. Just a little scratch. That's all. That's all. That comes from a man who was sent to the hospital by Chuck Bednarik and regards anything less than that as only a minor injury. That was a little more than a scratch. <laughs> Smarted a great deal. All right, and just that much are they short. The Dallas Cowboys will have a fourth down. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Alex Karras. Five minutes and 31 seconds remain in the third quarter from Philadelphia. The Cowboys and the Eagles. The Cowboys lead seven to nothing. Well, you know, the Cowboys are doing what I thought they were going to do. They're going to came, they, they came out the second half. They start to run the football, and that's what they do best, and that's exactly how they're getting down the field right now. Interesting, too. A year ago, you would have creamed the field goal unit on the team. However, you do not now. Cowboys on fourth down and inches will go for it. Sawback with the rollout and was almost nailed. He was nailed. Getting in there quickly was Willie Cullors, the rookie from Kansas State. Willie Cullors was not expected to play, and he maybe has made the play of the night for Philadelphia. Well, let's get a look at this flag situation. Willie Cullors has been the most impressive rookie in the Eagles camp. And let's see what the call is. Intentional ground, the illegal that's forward that's pass, and with that goes lost it down. Philadelphia takes over, but again, it was Willie Cullors who got in there and put that pressure on. But Philadelphia, who seemed to be fired up earlier in this second half, has a great opportunity. They move from their own 43. Gabriel going to Zimmerman, kick off, Charlie Walker. Charlie Waters picks it off. There's a firecracker. Goes off in our booth. I hope it was. Charlie Waters intercepts for Dallas. Returns well, it to the 30-yard line. I don't know who threw that thing in this booth. If anybody did. But it is not an evidence of civilized procedure. You are right, Alex? Well, let me get my head out of the wall right here, and I'll be okay. Wow. I just leaped 14 feet in the air. I know you did. So did Frank. So did I. First and 10 for Dallas. They're at the 24-yard line. Charlie Waters with the key interception, and Philadelphia unable to get any kind of offensive moving. Newhouse gets a couple of yards. Down to the 21. That was Gabe's most dismal moment. He lobbed that pass. You know that, Alex? He's, he's, not throw, he's not throwing the ball with authority tonight. I was, surpri I was surprised at, at uh, what Staubach did with the fourth down and a half a yard coming out and trying to throw the ball. I couldn't understand that at all. Neither I thought they had, a, they had the eye. It had that uh, lead block in there and then let the, let the fullback pick up that uh, half a yard. Bill Houston, number 86, is in for Drew Pearson, a wide receiver for Dallas, on second down and seven. Roger flooding his backs, and he gets in trouble as Patton gets his hands on him, and he cannot get the pass off to Billy Joe Dupree, at least where he could catch it. But Jerry Patton this time with pressuring Staubach. 
Well, I, I'm surprised, uh, and well, I shouldn't say surprised because it's a young uh, defensive line that Philadelphia has, but they're putting pressure on Staubach tonight. There's no question about it, and uh, I think that McCormick has really gotten these guys playing football. All right, look at that now. That's John Nyland, the All-Pro guard for Dallas, but he's beating. And it just is Staubach's timing off enough that he could not get the ball to Dupree. Third down now at seven. The two wide receivers are back in now, Golden Richards and Drew Pearson. Boy, for Pearson, complete. First down, right on target for Roger Staubach. Joe Lavender was covering, and he wasn't covering that poorly. It's just a difficult pass to cover when the receiver and the quarterback are in sync. <laughs> Let's look again, and again, Staubach, with that perfect timing, just almost impossible to cover, man for man, when things, all the timing comes together. Pearson now, six receptions, 87 yards. After the first week, he was tied for the lead. He caught five against Atlanta. He should be well up there again after this week, or after tonight. On the 10-yard line, here comes Newhouse. Newhouse. Pulling his little way down to the seven yard line. Gain of three, it'll be second down and seven. Three thirty six remaining in the third quarter. The Eagles, who lost their opener to St. Louis, against the Cowboys, who won their opener against Atlanta. Cowboys out in front, seven to nothing. Newhouse again, goodbye, He's but over. a flag flies. Oh, and did he blow through there, but again, a flag is down. And the Eagles seem to be indicating that it's going to go against Dallas. No, offsides, Philadelphia holding against Dallas, offsetting. And Jerry Patton seems to be shaken up. Number 77. He's had a fine football game thus far for the Eagles. And he'll get some relief. As Mitch Sutton comes in. Number 79. Mike McCormick is apparently limbering up Johnny Reeves, the youngster from the University of Florida. And yet... He knows that Gabriel is his key guy for the year. It's a difficult time for McCormick. On second down and seven. Cowboys come right back with the same play. They scored on, but was called back. This time they get about three yards out of it. They're inside the five. They'll probably mark it at about the three and a half. Bill Dunstan was there to make the stop of Philadelphia. Took a lot of help from his friends. John Reeves came up a couple of years ago, had a big shot in 72. Just couldn't quite pull it all together when Mike McCormick came to the Eagles. He said, I want the number one quarterback, the big man that can do it all for me. So Reeves went to the bench. Gabriel took over. But we'll see. Reeves may be coming back into the game when Philadelphia gets the ball. Cowboys one time out. We'll be back in Philadelphia after this. I have two weaknesses, piano players and Americans. This is Charlie from Kansas City. Even Ushot does something to me. It's Brigade from our French collection. Sing, Marie, sing. C'est toi, where regular shirts are full and blousy. Brigade is for men who are sleek and trim. It lets you see what a man's build is like, while Ushot is on. Arrow, no wonder American men look so good. Beef ragu, a dish you might not cook unless your dishwasher could handle the mess. The new GE Pot Scrubber 2 dishwasher can. It's got room for big pots, a tough new interior which won't chip, peel, or rust ever. And listen to this. It's really quiet. To help you out of some tough scrapes, get the incredible Pot Scrubber 2 dishwasher. From General Electric, America's number one major appliance value. 
Staubach has just talked to head coach Tom Landry. Coming back out on the field, the Cowboys have a third down and a three. They could possibly make a first down at the one foot mark. But of course, they're more concerned with getting in. Craig Morton, who will be moving on to the WFL, signed with Houston. We understand that Houston now will be operating in Shreveport. Back backfield. Uh, uh. Dennison and Dennison pounds and fumbles. Oh, goodbye. Oh, look at this. A foot race with Bob back. He's going to go all the way on it. Can you believe that? Oh, Joe Lavender, 97 yards. Oh, Joe Monday Lavender. Football. It never fails, Frank. Unbelievable. <laughs> Boy, if that doesn't spark things up. That's Philadelphia's first touchdown of the year, and they got it on defense. That's going to be a record. That's 97 yards. How about that? Joe Lavender being congratulated. Dennison, the rookie from... Good town, State, Pennsylvania. Gave it all he had, running out of control, trying to get in there for his second touchdown of the night. Coughed it up, and Lavender picked it up. Out ran Staubach for 97 yards. His glasses stood him in good stead. He saw the football, all right. <laughs> Tom Dempsey will attempt to tie it up, and indeed he does. Let's take a look at that again, and you'll see Dennison, who really running with abandon for the goal line and is really nailed. We'll try and pick out exactly the man who was and gave him the tough lick and I guess you'd it have to Berge. say it's Bill Berge. Now look at the scramble. And you better believe he has speed because Roger Staubach isn't slow. He had a good angle and yet Lavender used every inch of the playing field getting to the sidelines and just turn it on. And what a thrill for the second year man from San Diego State. Look at his glasses, Giff. Well, oh, they the, you know, his nickname is the Birdman. And he has got to be one thrilled youngster tonight. Wowie. Oh, I said that twice before. 2 16. Remaining in the third quarter, and it's all tied up. Well, now you see what you're part of, Alex Karras. Every week, something goes crazy. Zany, zany, zany. I'll tell you one thing, someone must be talking to both these teams before we go on with them, I'll tell you that. Tom Dempsey to kick off. This will be... Well, Strayhorn is battling with Dennis Morgan. <laughs> and it was, you take it, no, you take it. And as it turns out, Dallas will have to begin in the hole at the 10-yard line. And if you're wondering about Lavender possibly having set a record, Alex mentioned it, and the record was set by Jack Tatum against Green Bay in 72, Alex, 104 yards. That's 100. right, but look, let's look at this again, Alex. This is, you get a cat, no, I'll get a cat, no, you get a cat. Strayhorn finally falls on it, but a 97-yard fumble return can upset a lot of things. You think the Eagles are sky high now, Frank? Oh, you better believe. Bow back, and he hands off to Walt Garrison, and Garrison pulls Eagle tacklers with him over the 15 to the 17. And Dallas is now determined to attack, 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 and make up. Let's have another look at that play that resulted in the Philadelphia touchdown. Here we go again. Well, he's got all the blockers out in front of him. Dennison does a good job. He cuts in. He's fighting for everything he got. Berge really unloads on him. Yep, that's what did it. And there it goes. Good hands by Lavender on that play. Second down and three. Dallas trying to pull it back together again. They hand off to Garrison, and Garrison will lose a couple. Bill Dunstan, number 61, moving across to make the stop. Landry. Giff mentioned that now official record of 104 yards on a fumble return by Tatum. If you remember that play, Giff, the officials made a mistake. 
but it was allowed to go through and it's a new official record. Harold Carmichael, number 17, waiting to get into action. Big down for the Dallas Cowboys. Third down, now pull it along two. The ball resting just short of the 19-yard line, their own 19. And they will not get the first down. Newhouse tripped up by Will Wynn and then nailed by Bill Berge. Well, we got a football game with 35 seconds left and counting down in the third quarter where it's 7-7. Seven to seven. Maybe the Eagles don't deserve it. The Cowboys were pushing them all over the field. But in the clutch at the goal line, the rookie who scored the earlier touchdown fumbled. Lavender recovered, went 97 yards. And that was it. And Bill Berge, 66, whom you sing on that play, is having himself some night tonight. Marv Bateman, the punt for Dallas. The single safety for Philadelphia, a dangerous one, Bill Bradley. Bateman nails it. Bradley at his own 45. Whoa, oh. and boy, does he go down. Getting down there quickly was Mark Washington, number 46 for Dallas. 7-7, seven to seven, and that is the end of the third quarter. We'll be back in Philadelphia right after this. Around here, it's always bumper to bumper. I gotta concentrate full time on my driving, so I use the racing version of the STP double oil filter. With the filter in a filter, I know I don't have to worry about the protection my engine's getting. Of course, I don't know what kind of traffic you drive in, but when I go to work, man, it's always rush hour. Get filter in a filter protection for your car. The STP double oil filter. Georgie, you are about to see the investment idea of the century. Al. The electric fork. Oh, Al. I can get you in on the ground floor. Al, I've got my money invested in something else. More and more people are discovering savings accounts at Savings and Loans. The return is substantial, and your money is insured up to $20,000 by an agency at the federal government. Al, is this the same guy who invented the folding waterbed? That's not funny, Georgie. I almost drowned. Your savings and loan wants you to know how money works. You're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score Dallas 7, Philadelphia 7. We'll return after this word from our local station. Watch Happy Days tomorrow night at 8, 7 Central, here on ABC. Back at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, a few moments ago, you saw Dallas punt to Philadelphia. A fair catch was called for by Bill Bradley. However, as the third quarter ended, Dallas was detected with ineligible receivers downfield, so they will punt again. Marv Bateman will punt to Bill Bradley. Bradley standing just at midfield with a fine opportunity to put Philadelphia in good field position. And even better than he anticipated as it goes off the foot of Marv Bateman. And, and it will be marked at the 38-yard line. The game tied at seven apiece. And Mike McCormick now forgets all about John Reeves, the youngster from Florida. He plays it safe, Alex. He goes back with the veteran Gabriel as bad a night as Roman has been having. Well, he's got to go with the experience now, and uh, Gabriel can get him in. All right, the two setbacks are Sullivan, 25, and Poe James, known as number 27. He has replaced Boulash. This is Sullivan. Turning the corner, gets the first down. He gets down to the 25, inside the 25, before he's dragged down by his jersey by Leroy Jordan. 
The best ground gain all night by the Philadelphia Eagles as we look at it again. And in the third quarter, Philadelphia had the ball for two minutes and five seconds. Only four plays. Look at Sullivan moving ahead. Jerry Sizemore, the number one draft choice of a year ago, got in a good block there, number 76. They had the ball four plays in the third quarter, and they tied the score. First and 10 at the 25-yard line of Dallas. Sullivan gets the call again, and he, this time he coughs it up, and have they ruled it dead? Yes, they have. Oh, and how about Carmichael taking it out of the hands of Cornell Green? All for nothing, of course, because the ball had been ruled dead where Sullivan made contact with the ground. Eight-yard pickup. 21 quick yards by Sullivan in the last two plays. Watch this now. Carmichael will come back. He thinks <laughs> that <laughs> Cornell Green maybe had recovered. <laughs> Second down. Call it a long two. The ball at the 17. Or the 18. Sullivan again. Or rather, Poe James this time trying the middle. Running into Bob Lilly, Jordan, and Jethro Pugh. We're going to show you Joe Lavender now, the guy who just went 97 yards. There he is. There's his glass. Look at his eyes popping out there. I've never seen a guy play with glasses on before. I think he can get away with it because he plays really in the backfield. He doesn't make a lot of contact. If he played up in the middle of the line, he'd get him cracked every other play. A most happy fella. 97 yards. He went with the Cowboys fumbled and tied up just a few moments ago. Third down, an important situation for Philadelphia at the moment. They tried to run on this situation on three different occasions. They try again. They fail again. Three times now, Philadelphia has been turned back on the third and a long two situation trying to run it. Dallas tough against the run. Now it's going to be fourth down. And Tom Dempsey comes out onto the field. A big moment for Tom Dempsey. He kicked one from 44 yards last week. There's no question that th th these teams hate each other. And then watch Charlie Smith get a nice little pop for number 85. Watch him get a little pop. Left of your screen. Watch it now. Wacko! Let's get it one more time. I love this. This is football, folks. Wacko. 39 yards out, Tom Dempsey, or rather 34 yards out. Dempsey will attempt to untie this football game. And Dempsey knew before anyone that he had made it. Philadelphia moves out in front of Dallas, 10 to 7. Tom Dempsey, the holder of the NFL record for the longest field goal at 63 yards, is over to be congratulated by head coach Mike McCormick. It's incredible. The Eagles are ahead with no offense at all. Look at Dempsey there after the kick. They were minus three yards for the third quarter. We'll be back right after this. Over the past three years, we put models of Continental up against the other luxury car in televised tests of riding comfort and driving ease. And in these tests, a majority of owners of that other car picked the Continental over their own make. This is the 1975 Lincoln Continental Town Coupe, redesigned and re-engineered to challenge the other luxury car. We asked these owners of that other luxury car what they thought of our redesigned Town Coupe. Extremely luxurious. I think this has fine lines. We asked them to try out the town coupe. I was impressed with the ease of steering. A great pleasure to drive. And they looked over our restyled town car at the luxury of its interior. They saw the new Mark IV, timeless, classic. A nationwide survey projects that in the last three years, over 33,000 drivers of that other car switched to Continental. Introducing the 1975 Continentals. Judge any luxury car by our car. Tom Dempsey, who just hit from 34 yards out to put the Eagles ahead 10 to 7, as Howard pointed out, the Eagles' big offense has been perfecting of the fumble return because they were minus three yards in the third quarter. But they lead 10 to 7. Dempsey sets the kick to Dennis Morgan and Les Strayhorn. This will be Dennis Morgan. And it was Dempsey that made the stop. 
Otherwise, Morgan might have gone all the way. Tom Dempsey. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to show you something, and this is this is why they why they call this kickoff team the Suicide Squad. They're coming right down. Watch 52, Riley. There goes one. Goodbye. He does the one and a half kip. What was that? One and a half kip. Or is it a tuck? Dallas takes over. They'll move from their own 43-yard line. They've had all the offense, but they trail on the scoreboard. Golden Richards, very close to the first down, right in front of his own bench. No Lavender covering Richards. Gain of nine. Here comes the messenger man, Gene Fugit, with the play from head coach Tom Landry. 11.39 remaining in the game from Philadelphia. The temperature, the beginning of the evening, 55 degrees. It has now dropped into the middle 40. Second down, call it less than a yard. Play fake by Staubach. Complete to Drew Pearson. Pearson has it at the 35, another Dallas first down. Covered there by John Outlaw and dropped by Outlaw. Here comes a match between Outlaw and Pearson, and every time they, they seem to need a big down, they go to Pearson. Outlaw does a pretty good job. He backs up. He's supposed to do exactly that. He beat him a little bit to the inside on that. Pearson goes up a nice catch, and here comes Outlaw. A very pretty catch. Huh? Outlaw can't cover him one-on-one. -on -one. Not only does Pearson outmove him, but he's too big for him. First and 10 for Dallas. They're on the 33-yard line of Philadelphia. Newhouse getting a real fine block from Garrison. The lead back through, and Newhouse has another Dallas first down. What if we could get a look at that again? You'll see why Garrison is so valuable in that backfield. Now watch him. All right. He's leading it right through the hole. And watch Newhouse. Look at that, look at that block. Yep, and this is what I mean about a fast Don Nottingham. He's had a big night tonight, Robert, with those damaged ribs. Newhouse all the way down to the 18-yard line. 20 Eight. carries, 88 yards on the night. Oh, the crowd has quieted somewhat as we were yelling a moment ago. Dowback goes to the air looking for Pearson, and this time fine coverage by Outlaw. Oh, he did a fine job on it. You know, that is Alex, Mr. Dempsey. Yards. I ran all the way down when he kicked that one, and I, I lit a match. I thought he had helium in that ball. <laughs> out loud. You know, we kind of overlooked what a super play he made in stopping Dennis Morgan on that kickoff. Dennis Morgan could have gone for a touchdown, and Tom Dempsey moved over there and made the stop. Second down and 10. Ball up the 18. Here comes Newhouse, bouncing through and finally going down in the arms of Berge. Boy, he is a little fire plug. He really scoops around. It's kind of hard for those linebackers to see, I think, circulating around there behind the offensive line and the defensive linemen. Well, Blaine Nye and John Nyland are doing a good job right now in the middle. When you look at that graphic, the Cowboys 314 yards, the Eagles 93. And the Eagles leading 10 to 7. 63 plays for Dallas, 34 for Philadelphia. Third and four, the ball's at the 12. You can understand Landry not looking happy. Staubach trickles it off to Garrison. Very close to the first down. It'll depend on where they mark it. Steve Zabel was right there. Actually, Staubach was trying to go to Pearson. He was again covered well by Outlaw. And it will be short of the first down, and out comes the field goal unit. Well, they got a half a yard to go. Howard, Landry, what would you do? Is, Landry is doing the right thing. Put the points on the board. You got eight minutes and 50 seconds left. Plenty of time. Dallas has dominated the game offensively all night. Offensively, Philadelphia has done nothing. Dallas can get the ball back and go on the victory. Tie it up now, Alex. I agree with you. <laughs> well, Landry will be glad to hear that. <laughs> and we all agree. 
good from the 26 yard line for 26 yards out and it is tied up 10 apiece and we'll be back in Philadelphia right after this message. Come on, baby, you don't quit on us. <laughs> I knew we shouldn't have bought this boat. Hey, she won it! You did it! <laughs> you didn't do it. Oh, maybe it was flooded. Flooded? <laughs> yeah, well, you think you can do any better, boy? Go on! Yeah, yeah I guess. Go on. Me at it. Let's see, you want to grab this wire. It's, it's burning. Hey, come on, hand me a wrench. <laughs> When you only go around once, you learn to reach for the gusto in life. In everything. Even your beer. That's why they're Schlitz. Why settle for less? Eight minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the game for Philadelphia. It's tied at 10 apiece. Keep in mind, if it remains tied, we will go into a sudden death period. Mac Percival set to kick off for Dallas. He'll be kicking to Bo James, 27, 33, Randy Jackson. And this will be Bo James at his sixth, and he bobbles the ball. And he comes up with it, and down he goes at the 17-yard line. Again, Mark Washington getting down there quickly to make the stop. Mark Washington, dangerous on the special team. Well, Frank mentioned the temperatures have fallen down into the 40s. What was it John Keith said, Frank? Autumn, I see the kid sitting careless on the greenery floor. You know, he could have. <laughs> First and 10 for the people of their own 17. Tom Sullivan in the middle gets about three yards out to the 20. Dallas led early in the game. Doug Jensen went in. Dennison went in for four yards out to make it seven to nothing Dallas. And Joe Lavender tied it all up in the third quarter. He went 97 yards with a Doug Dennison fumble. Philadelphia had a 34-yard field goal. And Percival has just kicked one from 26 yards out. Second down and seven. The ball right at the 20. Gabriel has Poe James. Oh, oh look at that. Get up, Poe. <laughs> Somebody blew something. 34-yard gain. Had he been able to hit him in stride, there would have been no cowboy close to Poe James. You'll see Poe James coming out of the backfield. He's at the bottom of your screen. And obviously, somebody made an error. Whether it was D.D. Lewis, a linebacker, we, were, we don't know. Frank, we were discussing about center field. When that guy goes, when they use the, the, uh, the safety goes away from that center field, they, they like to hit the middle, and that's what they would call James. They had an awful lot of time to throw the ball. When you get a when you get a back that goes that far down the field, you're not getting any rush. So the Eagles in a fine field position, and Bo James. Picks up six more yards. He's down to the 40. It'll be second down and three. If Gabe had thrown that ball a foot shorter, it was touchdown. 6.46 and the clock moving here in Philadelphia. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Alex Karras. Zimmerman. Wide to the right for Gabriel. This team looking under Guy Morris' center. With Tom Sullivan off the right side. He'll be short of the first down. He'll get two yards down to the 38. Hit there by Cornell Green. They're about too short here, Giff. What do you do? Go on the ground for it or put it in the air? With the success they've had in this situation, you almost have to go up in the air. You know, I think... They've I tried it over and over, Alex, and they have had no success at all. You know, also, I think they must really be jamming up young. That linebacker must be doing a good job. He hasn't even been getting out of the line of scrimmage, Howard. He hasn't been in the game. They have converted one time and ten attempts on third down. And this is a critical one. Gabriel missed the handoff. And it's his best third down play of the night. It was I have seen it all. A 
busted play. Roman, who runs one foot every 10 seconds, goes up the middle. <laughs> First down. Clock ticking away. Tied up at 10 apiece. There's the missed handoff. He couldn't get it to him. <laughs> Either that or he didn't want it. <laughs> First and 10 for Philadelphia. They're at the 32-yard line now of Dallas. To Sullivan, Sullivan nailed after a gain of about one. Well, you know, it's a funny thing. They haven't run the ball all night, and now they're running the ball. I think really what they're trying to do is they're trying to get in the position to get that field goal, Howard. I don't think they want to take any chances in throwing the ball. All of a sudden, now they've turned from the passing game to the running game. Well, they've got to get a little closer for field goal. Although not if Tom can do what he did against you guys those years back. Second down and nine. The ball's at the 31 yard line. There he goes. Carmichael, and he holds on. He has a first down. He's inside the 20. Big Harold Carmichael. The biggest target in the game today. Here he is against Charlie Waters. Waters turns him loose to Cliff Harris for free safety. Frank, and that's a hit right between. Excuse me, that's what we were talking about, a controlled passing game. Now he's going eight and six yards instead of going for that bomb all the time. Which is his better range. Absolutely. Exactly right. Ball is on the 18-yard line. First and 10, Philadelphia. Clock moving. Four minutes remaining on the scoreboard clock. And Tom Sullivan tripped up going over the right side. Well, at the exactly critical moment coming into our booth when the Eagles are belaboring the Dallas Cowboys as they always seem to do here in Philadelphia. We have been joined by the relic of the past. Our old friend, let's get that camera turned around. Right after this play gift takeover, Dandy Don Meredith is here. Second down and 10. The ball is at the 18-yard line. Sullivan, the hole of the left side, and he gets seven yards. He's down just short of the 10 yard line. Wait a minute. Oh, oh my Dallas God. Recovered. Fumble the ball, and Dallas has recovered. Dallas has recovered. Take a look into the camera, Dandy. Son of a gun. <laughs> Howard, how's it? Alex, how are you doing? I'm fine, Don. Well, I'm glad. Here it is in Philadelphia, and Howard's in the second half. I'm really delighted to hear about that. The betting odds were against it. For yes, they were. What's happening out there tonight? What's happening? Your old buddy Dave Edwards just came up with the fumble for Dallas when they were in a lot of trouble. I was really upset when they went for that field goal a while ago. Why did they do that? Howard, you always had those answers. Why did they do that? I wanted him to go for it. Karras and Gifford agreed. Put the points on the board. There was a lot of time. There's the man on the screen right there that did it. He, he says, I'm going to go for three. They've got it tied up here now. How you guys are doing? Take it away, Frank. All right, first and ten for Dallas. It's tied up at ten apiece. Three minutes and thirteen seconds remaining in the game. They must move from their own eleven. And Newhouse is nailed by Bergie. Sandy, what happens Alverson. to the Dallas team against Philadelphia? Once a year, the Eagles give them fits. I don't know. They, you know, they, they beat them last year, which was a real surprise. I, I really don't know. It seems that uh, Dallas just doesn't quite get it together. Uh, Dallas has a really good team, and, uh, and the Eagles are struggling. What do you think? I think you got a problem down there. You I do? think they've benefited by your presence, though, in the <laughs> recent. What? Do you miss us, kid? I miss you a lot, Howard. You're doing a super job. Frank, get it again. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Second down and 11. Newhouse, Newhouse lost one, and this time Robert Newhouse comes back and picks up a couple of those yards. <laughs> that Newhouse is a little uh, swift Don Nottingham. He is a little swift Don Nottingham, and there's the Dupree. It's not LG either. It really is. You guys do a good job. Let's see if McDonald's can get something working here. Just want to come by and say, hey, do it good. Okay, Dandy. Good, nice good. to see you. Third down and seven. Clock ticking, and the Dow Cowboys are apparently waiting for the two-minute warning. Looking away as Roman Gabriel looking on from the sidelines. They were so close when they fumbled the ball, turning over for the third time tonight. We'll be back in a moment. Flair. Flair. Super pen. Now with a point guard. A super hard, tough plastic shield. 
won't mush down. Point guard. Top keeps fine lines fine, won't mush down. Bold lines bold, won't mush down. Makes Flair one pen that always writes just the way you feel. Time after time after line after line. Flair. Flair. The super pen. Now with the tough point guard. Won't mush down. Flair. Flair. Uh, yes, I'd like a butane lighter, please. Which one? Oh, they're all about the same. I wish you hadn't said that. Cricket lighter is really quite a light. It'll last for months and still burn bright with thousands of sure fire lights and a flame that adjusts to different heights. That's no ordinary cricket. Well, cricket's no ordinary lighter. Catch a cricket for $1.49 by Gillette. Two minutes left in the game from Philadelphia. Two minutes, at least, left in the four regulation quarters. Should it be tied as it is, as of the moment, at 10 apiece, we will move into a sudden death period. Tom Landry looking on and feeling much relieved, I'm sure, because the Eagles apparently were on their way to winning this football game, or at least going out in front, breaking that tie, when they fumbled the football. Right now, the Cowboys have a third down and seven. They're on their own 13-yard line as Mike McCormick looks on in his second year as a head coach. Great player with the Cleveland Browns. Coach Fender, Otto Graham of Washington, Vince Lombardi, George Allen came here last year. And has turned the Eagles around. On third down. The effort complete to Pearson. Out of bounds at the 22-yard line. First down, Dallas. That same pattern, Alex, all night to Pearson, that sideline pass. Almost unstoppable, it seems like right now. Just such a timing thing between the quarterback and the receiver. And, of course, finding a situation when the cornerback is going to be man for man on the receiver. Pearson's caught eight for 107 yards thus far tonight. Not a bad performance. Five last week, not a bad start. On first down. Drop back. Uh-oh. Picked off by Randy Logan. I don't believe it. Not a ball that could have been thrown. I do not believe this, Alex. Well, that, that ball, like Frank said, it shouldn't have been thrown. I, I think he threw what we call cross cross course and, and course, and he didn't have to do that at all. I think it, if he did anything, he should eat the ball or just throw it way out of bounds on this one. Took a big chance. It's a big gamble here. The receiver wasn't even close to it, Howard. All right, a big break for Philadelphia. They've had a few tonight, and not much offense, not a whole lot more defense, but they have had the break. I guess you could say they have made their breaks. They caught, caused the fumble that gave them a 97-yard touchdown. Bo James over the right side. Clock moving at 142. Still not stopped by the Eagles. They have. Three timeouts remaining. And they are going to try and get it within the range, the field goal range of Tom Dempsey. Tom kicked a 44-yarder last week against St. Louis. He's kicked a 34-yarder tonight. Second down and eight. Clock still moving. Sullivan. And down goes Sullivan. In the arms of Pat Tume. Well, Gabriel is playing safe now. Looking for the field goal, but Dempsey's going to have a pretty long kick. And, of course, keeping in mind that the game does not end, it's tied at 10 apiece. As Denver and Pittsburgh proved yesterday in our first overtime regular season game of the year. I'll tell you, you know, I used to gear myself to play 16 minutes. After that, I don't think I could have made 15 more. Third down and 10. Like the Gabriel, will do. Gabriel, and this time he threw the ball down on the ground. I don't see any possible receiver, but apparently he will not be called. Bobby Martin is unhappy with the call or the absence of the call. Fourth well, down, and out comes Tom Dempsey. 31 seconds remaining on the clock. And Dempsey will be kicking from about 45, 46 yards. And, well, what can you say? In three plays, Gabriel negotiated a half yard. 
Bill Bradley does the holding. It'll be from 45 yards. Well, now Bradley moves back, make it 46. Well, close your eyes if you're for Dallas. That looks good. It is good. You know, he saved this game in more ways than one. He stopped Dennis Morgan after he kicked off the last time, and Morgan would have gone all the way probably if Dempsey had not made the tackle. Doggone it, if everyone, anyone's going to kick a field goal, I'd like to see Tom Dempsey do it. Even though he beat us and he's beaten Dallas tonight, he's a terrific guy and a great competitor. Here's a guy who really shouldn't even be on a football field, but he still likes to play the game. 25 seconds remaining in the game. The Eagles have moved out in front of Dallas, 13 to 10. Now we'll be back. New tires must meet U.S. government safety standards. These tires are doing just that. Only these tires aren't exactly new. They're the same set of Sears steel-belted radials that ran the back roads of Morocco. After Morocco, this same set of tires ran American roads. Ran a total of 72,400 miles. After all that punishment and all those miles, the tires still look remarkably good. To prove how good they really are, we are testing them against the safety standards new tires must meet. And these Sears steel-belted radials not only meet those standards, they exceed everyone. That's something to think about the next time you buy a new set of tires. Radial design, two steel belts. The Sears steel belted radial, only at Sears. Tom Dempsey sets it up. He kicked a 34-yard field goal earlier. He saved a possible Dallas touchdown with a tackle on a kickoff. And he hit from 46 yards out a few moments ago to put the Eagles out in front of Dallas 13 to 10. And he's not signed to a contract. They're letting him play out his option. Maybe after this, there'll be a management change. 25 seconds on the scoreboard clock. <laughs> Dennis Morgan feels it at the 12. Struggling to get out of bounds, and he does not get out of bounds. Hit there by Marion Reeves. 21 seconds left in the game. There it is. Well, there's a little rhubarb going on. They're questioning each other's ancestry now, I think, Frank. Well, they just scramble around a bit. Dallas has three timeouts. They have 21 seconds. And after last week in Buffalo, we will hesitate to say that it's all over. And who knows what next Monday night will bring with Denver going into the national capital to play the men of George Allen. Dallas will make their attempt moving from their own 18-yard line. Is there a haze in the game right now? No, it's Pearson and Richards, the wide receiver. Eagles in the prevent defense. They'll let nothing go deep if they can avoid it. It's complete to Pearson. Pearson out to midfield. His ninth reception, Frank. What an evening he's having. Look at him again. Now he'll find a gap in that prevent defense. Eagles playing total zone back there. He finds the hole. Saw back hits him beautifully. 14 seconds remaining. Pearson has now caught nine for 133 yards. And Dallas with a timeout. And now if you're now if you're a defensive lineman, you're going to get teed up to rush that passer. You don't care about the run anymore, so you're going to be teeing off. You don't even care about that offensive guy in front of you. You're going to try to get rid of him as soon as you can and get to that passer. Tom back over conferring with head coach Tom Landry. What is really difficult to do and that's what you want to do is try to go to the outside and hit your receiver let him get out of bounds and kill the clock the trouble is the defenders also know that well they're coming to us in the booth and I've got with me the executive producer of the forthcoming Frank Sinatra main event on October 13th live from Madison Square Garden his name Jerry Weintraub and if 
the golden one with the golden voice and the big blue eyes can produce this kind of drama and excitement for you, you've got a big show coming up. He can, he can. Live, the main event, October 13th. Howard Cosell and Frank Sinatra. You're very kind. There's your plug. We've got to go back to this game. Jerry Weintraub, ladies and gentlemen. Gipper. First and ten. Dallas now down to one timeout. They have the ball on their own 45. They need something very dramatic. And they have it. Drew Pearson out of bounds at the 31. John Outlaw covering. There are seven seconds remaining on the clock. Well, it was as we said, it's not over. No, it's not over. Pearson has been simply unstoppable tonight. Well, you know, the, the defensive backs are pumping so far back there, and they're, and they're giving them too doggone much room. You know, I, I, I don't mind them doing what they're doing, but play them a little, a little more tighter than they're playing right now. They can still get in field goal position. You've got to play a little tighter. He just beat the guy way outside. There's no, he wasn't even around him. I think it was precisely what I was saying that they were going to try and prevent them from doing, Alex. And they just gave him too much room to the outside. Meanwhile, Max Percival has come onto the field. Well, it's like a week ago when Oakland tried it. His attempt will be from about 48 yards. This field goal attempt to tie it up and go into sudden death overtime. Seven seconds remaining on the clock. Ten receptions tonight for Mr. Pearson for 157 yards. The scoreboard shows the drama of the situation. I'll tell you, you can imagine the churning that's going on in the stomach of Mac Percival. And again, that ten yards coming into play so dramatically as it has in preseason play. We've seen so many fewer field goals throughout preseason in the opening week of play. Send a letter to Alvin Pete Rosell, will you, Gap? Thank him for these uh, games, the schedule, as far as we've gone. I'll send him the bad notice when we get a bad one. Craig Martin will hold at the 38. That means a 48-yard attempt. No good. No good. Off to the left. And two seconds remaining on the clock. Well, I guess we can safely say it's all over. The Philadelphia Eagles have won this football game. And going into the season, who would have predicted that after two games, only one team in the Eastern Division would be unbeaten, and that team would be the St. Louis Cardinals. Mike McCormick is joyful. Tom Landry and the play of the coach's faces is disconsolate. The apparent inscrutability is there as he chews the gum, but as Frank said, things turn inside this man. Another National Football League upset on Monday Night Football. 385 yards of offense for Dallas, 167 for Philadelphia. Mac Percival on the bench. Should not be too dejected. A 48-yarder, possible, but not terribly realistic. That's it. Philadelphia has won their first game of the year, and Roman Gabriel takes the football off the field. Mike McCormick looking for Tom Landry, and Tom Landry heading to the locker room. And you know that this man feels the loss of the game. He hates to lose any of them, but when you dominate, as they did tonight, well, it hurts a little more. So Mike McCormick. Turned the Eagles around last year with a real fine finish coming up with a 5-8-1 season. As a team, that's going definitely going to be a contender, and they are for real. Philadelphia Eagles, 13, the Dallas Cowboys, 10. We'll be back in just a moment. I'm a sports nut, and the thing I can't stand is the grass in the football field looking blue. I've had three or four uh, color television sets, and Zenith is the first color television set that I've had where the colors are perfect. In a nationwide survey, more Zenith owners said they'd buy the same brand again than did the owners of any other color TV. Listen to the experts, and you'll choose Zenith Chroma Color 2. 
Friday is the day of the cat. The day of the new 75s at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. The new precision size Mercury Monarch, four-door sedan, and two-door coupe. The new Mercury Grand Marquis. The new Lincoln Continental, coupe, and sedan. The new Mercury Cougar XR7. See all the new 75s, including Montego, Comet, and the elegant Mark IV. Friday, the day of the cat, at the sign of the cat. So again, the Philadelphia Eagles have defeated the Dallas Cowboys 13 to 10. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football continues next Monday night when the Denver Broncos meet the Washington Redskins. The executive producer of NFL Monday Night Football is Rune Arledge. Coverage of tonight's game is produced by Don Olmeyer, directed by Chet Forty. Our technical director, Bill Morris. Our associate director, Dick Buffington. Don't forget that this Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports will bring you the always popular Harlem Globetrotters performing in London. And at the mic, a former Globetrotter himself, Will Chamberlain. Also featured will be the 25th running of the famed Southern 500 stock car race from Darlington, South Carolina, featuring defending champion Cale Yarbrough. That's ABC's Wide World of Sports this Saturday at 5 Eastern and Pacific Time, 4 Central, over most of these ABC stations. Once again, the final score, Philadelphia 13, Dallas 10. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cassell, Alex Karras, saying so long from the Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. There's a new spirit, a new look in the friendly skies. Catch the spirit of friendship service. The proceeding was a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. <laughs>